<laughs> Hello and welcome to Haphazard Heroes, where we take part in a cooperative storytelling adventure set in the realm of Calderon using Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Tonight's session is episode 89 of this campaign. So, um, thank you for joining us. Thank you guys. Hey, you know what? Thank you guys for playing. In my campaign. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, thanks thanks so much. You know what? This has been nice. Yeah. It's been real nice. Um, anyway, uh, if you want to, uh, it's a good run. If you want to see how nice it was, it was a good run. <laughs> a, good run. I know. a lot Bye. of pessimism. Uh, yeah, if you watched last week. See you next week. Bye. Um, yeah, if you want to see uh, all of the good runs they had up until now and shit went really uh, sideways, um, you can check out the, ha- uh, the website, haphazardheroes.com. The uh, um, uh, stuff that's on there are things like character bios. You can see maps. You can see uh, all kinds of good stuff along with those old episodes. Um, you can also find that stuff on YouTube. You should subscribe to all of it, like it. And if you really like our stuff, hey, um, you know, click all the buttons. Um, we appreciate it. Let's talk about what happened last time, though. Um, last time on Haphazard Heroes, the uh, the party was uh, in their home city, if there is any such thing for them, their headquarters uh, in Deepcrest, where they had. Um, uh, Obtain ownership of an inn called the uh, the Everstar Suites. Now, uh, after having taken ownership of this inn, they had been uh, allowing some uh, people to assist them um, with the caretaking of it, and had gone out and been doing their uh, whatever jobs needed done throughout the, uh, the realm. While uh, they had just returned back from a, uh, we'll call it a failed mission in Venkirk. Um, where they had uh, had a failed assassination attempt of one of the leaders there. <clears throat> the party had returned back, um, one of the places to uh, brass up to Tarakas' hometown, and then uh, lastly to um, uh, back to Deepcrest, uh, where they had uh, spent a night uh, recouping at their uh, at their at their inn and suite. Um, they had leveled up. Um, they had also um, uh, just uh, taken a little bit of time to lick their wounds, as as it were. Um, they had also discovered that they had. These black marks on the on their palms, um, indicating that they were being kind of tracked or monitored in some way, at least by this black powder guild, um, and that kind of had a sense of dread um, throughout that re- entire day, considering considering leaving, considering their next steps, where they might go, um, whether it was safe to stay. Um, before they had a chance to actually leave, though, they were distracted by Dagnus. Their uh, <coughs> bless you. Their uh, uh, what do we what do we call her? What do we, what do we call Dagnus's role? She just kind of goes by Dagnus. Kind of the, she's basically she's like our innkeeper. She's yeah. running the. She would yeah. whoop your ass mean? for calling her the hostess. Um, <laughs> she hires. She's, the, our, she's our XO. She hires the hostess and fires the hostess. Who was the hostess? Um, that weird guy. We didn't have hired hostess. Him? No. There was a major domo that you guys kept that was very kind of weird and droll, I believe. But yeah, oh, yeah, he was more of a. She's our executive officer. She's the XO for the, uh, mm-hmm. or rather. Was because as Dagnus brought everyone up to the uh, the observatory, this little um, uh, I don't know what the term is called. I'm sure there's a term for it, but it's like the gazebo that's on top of a building. I don't know what the word is. Per, um, per, 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 no, per, no, per, pergola. No. I feel like that's not right either. I almost said purgatory. So anyway, that was close that building. Yeah, that. The 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 domed thing with pillars around it that's sort of like open air on the top of a building. You know, everyone's got one. Um, the uh, uh, I know it's not very anyway. So she called the party up to to witness some some strange celestial event that seemed to be happening. Um, the uh, as the the sun was slowly blotted out from the sky, the the heroes realized that this was not an actual celestial event, but in fact a very very large airship that was descending out of the fog and hovering over the city of Deepcrest. And as they noticed this was happening, they saw several smaller airships descend and break off from this large mothership, um, one of which, uh, t- uh, several, actually two of which were descending directly towards the Everstar Suites. The heroes had fought against these drop troopers um, that had uh, arrived on site to, apparently to uh, either attack or snatch or something. Um, these, uh, the heroes, um, they fought uh, bravely, nerd having um, jet packed out and um, a, a, a landing onto a, a landing onto the um, uh, one of the airships themselves and fighting the the troopers that were piloting it. 
eventually taking control of one, ramming it into the side of uh, 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 the other, um, uh, and, and uh, smashing into the building. The other heroes, um, the other heroes themselves were uh, inside this pergola dome thing that we don't know the name of, fighting for their lives um, against these drones. Couple of. A what? Thank you. C U P O L A S. Thank you. Uh, cupola, cupola. Yeah, Francis Ford Cupola. That was on top of this building, and thank you. I googled it. Yeah, don't add us. Um, the uh, anyway, the heroes are in here fighting the the three of them fighting for their for their very lives. The um, holding their own for the most part against most of the drones. However, the final few enforcers um, besting a few of them one by one as and as each of the heroes were downed uh, while they were making death saving throws before they had a chance to resolve them um, these uh, their still bodies um, were uh, their unconscious forms were actually um, grabbed and teleported away by these um, by these enforcers that uh, to who knows where one by one these heroes were blipped away mm -hmm. unbeknownst to nerd um, oh, yeah. Kaz That's alone. Far away. Yeah, he saw Kaz. Kaz was seen, almost made it onto the back of it. But Kaz, and even invisibility, was um, was bested by one of these. After one of these yeah, drones discovered Kaz in invisibility and was still unconscious, uh, uh, transported away to who knows where. Nerd, thinking that he was either with the last remainder of his party or even by himself. Um, nerd. Uh, Hit a random, the biggest red button that was on this board, un unknowingly starting a self before I ever even went to pick him up. A yeah, self-destruct sequence, um, and and uh, 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 smashed this this ship into the mothership before uh, jetpacking Babagooks Babagooks mm -hmm. uh, ing away um, to safety. As these airships smashed into the bridge of the mothership, he watched as the mothership slowly arced and descended, smashing into the. Um, uh, part of deep crest causing this massive dust cloud to erupt and this chaos ensued uh, nerd as we um as we left off nerd was just barely dodging the dust cloud and i believe that is not a bad place for us to pick back up um so let's actually pick up there nerd you are uh you are pushing the limits of, of Bottle Gooks, um, trying to uh, evade this this dust cloud. Um, you're trying your best not to overheat it, not to, to risk mm -hmm. the, you know, at this point, um, an explosion would probably be fatal. Um, so uh, trying, as you mentioned last time, trying to like flappy bird it as, mm -hmm. as it were, as it were um, trying to uh, get altitude uh, in short bursts um, without uh, overloading the machine. Um, this has proved successful. There's no checks. You're not in any danger of, of, of uh, being overcome by this by this uh, uh, slowly expanding dust cloud. Um, however, you are. This is the situation that you are currently in, um, and the uh, beneath you, you can see that the impact is. It's got this kind of seismic wave that is still slowly like rumbling slowly out it's dissipating beneath you but you can kind of see that there are still like it's shaking the trees even outside of the city mm -hmm. um and this is where you were at high above it kind of just slowly um going up and down sorry yeah i did not work my way to the ground mm -hmm. would be my goal yeah the uh the uh i mean it would probably take a few minutes is the you know the dust continues to go out even after the, the seismic like the, the 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 waves are um, not continuing to ripple out and the the trees aren't are being like rocked anymore, and all that stuff has, has already uh, run its course. You can you can eventually land. It is now a still a, an ash cloud, mm -hmm. so it's still very dusty, and it's just raining bits of of um, it, it's basically ash, but it's uh, bits of rubble, bits of 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 um, um, cinder, bits of uh, um, little sparking uh, you, things that you're not you're not familiar with. Uh, bits bits of technology here and there that you're not. Um, you know, if, if, if any other time, it would be a good time to scrap, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is the situation that you're in. It's hard to see more than maybe 40 feet in any direction. Um, but uh, and it's also kind of hard to breathe. But you've got lots of torn clothing and things. I think you've already done something similar before with you having kind of kerchiefs and whatever. But it is um, the uh, it is thick. Um, the light right now is... Um, 
it's getting really dim because it was already getting dark to begin with. Yeah. And now with the with the with the dust cloud, it's almost uh, it's almost an eerie red in one to one side of the one side of the, the sky, and even that that dull redness is starting to fade. Um, so it's about to be pre- pretty dark. Um, the uh, from your experience, you also know that um, any time that there's that much, um, you know, you've been around a long time. You know, you've uh, even even in probably in your 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 sailings. You know, there are there's volcanoes exist. You know, it's not the first like eruption or thing that you've seen before. Um, you, you know, well, it's like you can expect the temperature probably to drop pretty significantly, pretty significantly. Um, and uh, this is this is the uh, situation that you're in. Um, looking for it's again to set where the, to set the stage. It is it was in now fairly late evening. Um, it was the seventy fourth, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, very late on the seventy fourth. Um, you just kind of trying to find shelter at the at the moment. Are you trying to call anybody? What's the plan? Um, I guess I would uh, first thing would be try to find shelter, but also like try to figure out if the like the dust cloud like basically passed me right like yeah. The, you're gonna survey the damage a bit. No, like oh, I would. Sorry, just, I would just like to try to figure out, like, if I think I can potentially get out of the radius of the dust cloud before finding shelter, or if I should just try to find shelter in said dust cloud. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, <clears throat> uh, it would be hard to tell from like the problem is because while you're in it, it's hard to see the edge of it. Right. Um, uh, bubble gooksing up a bit, you know, as as you do it. A few. T- I don't know if this is if this is what you would do. Uh, you tell me if you're not wanna, wanting to do it, but you would try to get some altitude, and um, for as long as you can see, like the dust cloud seems to be, is, at least in your area, it's hard to get above it, mm-hmm. um, uh, and the, you can't see the edge of it. Um, I mean, the nice. I would try to just find shelter though. Okay. Before I would send anything. Yeah, you are probably. It's a good call. You're probably you're probably wise enough to know that it's frustrating because fuck you. You wouldn't know if if it stopped. 20 feet, you know, up from the, like, you wouldn't know, you know, like, mm-hmm. if, if, yeah, uh, so, trying to find some shelter, it's, it's, almost, it's almost like sleepwalking, it's kind of stumbling around, looking for something or anything, um, you can find some, some, some rubble, um, um, you get close to it, it looks like it was, at one point, uh, uh, looks like it's part of, like, a, like a farmhouse, like, half of what would have, would have been a farmhouse at some point, um, um, the part one half of the farmhouse has is, is been um, sheared off. There's a big, looks like metallic cylinder. Um, you know, what's the word? Like a saucer-shaped thing is kind of smashed through one side of the house, just something like smoking and sizzling. It seems to be like one big solid piece of some sort of metal, um, but uh, like one of these bulbous pieces of this, these airships. Um, but it's just shrapnel pieces that have mm-hmm. um, kind of fallen and uh, exploded. But um, uh, you, you know, with a quick glance around, there doesn't seem to be anyone around, alive or dead, that you can see in, in the area. Um, and this is at least a partially intact roof to shield yourself from the ash Yeah. Uh, as it's still falling. Um, uh, eventually, the, the light would probably disappear, and you'd be left with whatever light you can, um, you can create on your own, if any. So... Um, <laughs> So yeah, okay. So to be, to be no, um, with no lights, as the lights uh, dim, um, there is uh, just your kind of grayscale vision. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you're thinking back to, about the day. Um, it's been a, it's been a day. The uh, started off in your own uh, hotel and inn, and uh, with your own workshop, and now this, uh, uh, this is a very different situation than the. Having a warm bed to, to cut up and sleep inside the mattress of. Um, any thoughts or any actions that you would do before you would take a rest? I am. Roughly, how much time has it been? Since the actual like impact and yeah. stuff like that. Maybe an hour, ninety minutes of just kind of like evasion and trying to get away and finally finding shelter. Okay, I am going to attempt to reach out to Kaz. Okay. With this ring of sending, um, and just be like, mm-hmm. "Hey, hey, pussy boy, um, still sniffing? I don't like. Are you okay? Just curious. Like, are you alive? Are you dead? Are you Ash? Did I fuck you guys up on accident? Love ya. 
the <coughs> you send this ring just like you always do. Um, you can kind of feel the not here. Sorry. the the rings have like kind of a, you've used enough of these now at this point. Um, Okay, the idea of like a away message from Kaz is very funny that we should explore in the metagame. Uh, um, the uh, uh, the rings that you have used now, you know that like how to tell that they actually go off or they work. Yeah, they kind of go from like this really nice burnished whatever it is, gold or whatever the material is, probably mm -hmm. probably gold at this point since they're pretty expensive. Um, that you're able to see that it goes like to this dull kind of tarnished. So you can tell that the spell has gone. Mm -hmm. it, got, it has gone off. It's been it's worked. You wait. Motherfucking shit, Dick. Um, I'm going to then decide to go ahead and try to get a long rest in. Yeah. Maybe in eight hours he'll be up. Yeah. I mean, it's worth a try. So, nerd, uh, you, um, Try to get some sleep. You rest. You put your head down in this uh, uh, wherever you can to get some rest, and um, you're surprised that even with all this stress, how quickly, how quickly sleep comes, and um, you're welcome to go ahead and uh, hit the long rest. Um, I'm just gonna fix my remaining broken. Gun. Yeah, as you kind of. Okay, good. We're set. <laughs> Absolutely. As you're going to sleep, you're repairing some of these weapons so that you have something. <clears throat> all the things that are really On the following morning, the 75th, you wake up pretty almost immediately after the eight hours with a start, probably holding <laughs> one of your probably one of your uh, recently repaired weapons. Um, it is, we'll say it's you know 7:30, 8 a.m. in the morning your time, and the ash cloud seems to have diminished a bit and it is up to you what you'd like to do okay. i'm gonna immediately whip out another ring and just because i want to change it up this time i'm gonna mm -hmm. reach out to to Rackimus. and uh, i'm just gonna say hey sweet thing is still alive or what's the deal um, anyway, just like, where are you? What the fuck? Don't be dead. Please, don't be dead. There's another long pause. You see the ring turn dull on your finger again. And there's no response. Okay, I'm gonna use one more ring. Hey there, lady. Um, um doesn't count, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ums are like for somebody who's like every other word is um and er and like. No, they don't count. So hey there, lady. I know you moved on, but I have a black mark and really fucked also met Aziz no 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 first name Amir first name no. Amir Amir cuz that's my friend exactly so nice <laughs> Um, there's a, uh, a, another longer pause, and as you see the ring go to tarnished again, you think that, oh, man, are these things working even? Um, mm -hmm. And after a long pause, you uh, hear a familiar voice that um, uh, responds with, um, uh, "You uh, really, you met him. That is, uh, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. It." Uh, more sorry that you have that you now share the mark there's a a pause where you can come you can almost hear like a spell still going but you can like hear her like considering and thinking and she says i think that if you can make your way to emberfall within the next 36 hours 
we may have room for you, but it would not be up to me. And it would stop. The um, nerd, you know Ember Falls, I don't want these port cities. Um, it's one that you don't go to very far. It's south. Oh, it's south. It's okay. the on the deer. It's the uh, kind of like what you would call the South Pole, if you would call something okay. on the South Pole. This in this place. Um, uh, it's um, if there's a place that you don't really relish going to, if it's like it's like sta- it. it's like being stationed. <laughs> it's like being stationed on. Uh, it's like being stationed on uh, like like you know Juno or someplace in like yeah. in like uh, it's not it's if it's it's very actually that's actually a good uh, actually a good corollary for for this place. It's more like um uh, uh like a gold rush town. Um, it has the bare essentials. It, there's not a lot of other cities around it. Um, it is really just uh, the last stop. It's a very uh, uh, very commonly pl- uh, common stop on a lot of long haul uh, um, uh, cargo runs, which is why it's a good place for uh, pe- uh, you know um, you get you. freemen to uh, loot. Um, <laughs> the yeah, but that that is all that you get. Um, you can feel the sense of the spell kind of dissipating. Um, you at least have a, a location. Yeah, you. For those of you that aren't looking at a map like the rest of us, um, Emberfall is um, uh, southwest of where Nerd is currently at, uh, about three thousand miles and on a different continent. Yeah. Um, if if if. If nerd is in Brazil, this is in South America, or Argentina, on the, like across the body of water. It's a long ways away. That was a weird well, like to about to pow. Well, I mean, like if I'm looking at Antarctica, you mean? Yeah. Well, Amber Falls kind of like it's pretty. You big. said Brazil to Argentina. Well, Argentina is the bottom of South America. Yeah, kind of. Let's say. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yes, anyway. yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, okay. Yours is a better analogy. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll give it to you. It is. Um, so like. Oh, do I have a map? I might, this might break everything, but I'm going to try it for the people who might be watching. I think I might have a map view. Let's see if this still works. <laughs> Give me a second. Other yeah, views. Map World screen. map. Okay, let's see if this works. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. No map, no names. All right, weird. Um, here, well, I'll fix it on the... Uh, I can probably fix it on the break. We'll use our map. Point being, uh, nerds kind of have a... It's a tall order. Um, it sounds like maybe the, she's... They're about to embark somewhere, but you have at least a short window where you might be able to to join up. I'm just going to send back, and I'm going to say, <clears throat> well, fuck. At Deepcrest, Deepcrest destroyed. Daddy slash guild has my friend from the... Where are you from? Shimmer. Shimmer. Feel like that's probably where you're going. Might help a little. Yeah, um, again, there's another delay, but you get a response back from her saying, um, if you're able to make it here, nerd, then I suppose we can have, uh, we can pay respects to your fallen friends. But, uh, um, yeah, we know it is not easy to, uh, to lose crewmates. Okay, well, then I'm going to do a couple things. Um, oh, man, you mentioned the shimmer. She probably she probably would have started off at the, at the top saying, like, yeah, like, uh, um, any information on the shimmer would be greatly appreciated. Um, if you can make it here, yeah, then she would say the same thing, like, if you can make it here, you um, okay, can commemorate so your friends. I am going to basically, and you can montage this however the fuck you want, because I feel like this is probably going to take some time. Um, hmm. See if I could buy enough pieces of an airship to put one together. <laughs> oh, like, like hodgepodge together. Like fucking junk one together. I don't know how some get in there. If Rocket Raccoon can do it, you can. Right. I want a skills challenge. I love this. I love the gumption of this. Because I think that like the docks have to have been totally wiped out, and they still wouldn't make it there in thirty six hours anyway. And the the DM just had the hubris to describe one of these. Uh, yeah. I know. Like, things I know. In the middle of this house. I know. Um, That's great. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah. Do you see the giant saucer over there? Uh, <laughs> you better name it like Babagook's Daddy. They're like the, um, uh, the daddy. What do you the call it? Like, there's like repulsor. They're basically like these like repulsor type things, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Um, so yeah, one of these major repul- large repulsor things is right there. All right, let's talk about um, let's talk about skills checks really quick. Um, let's see if I can do one of these quick. Um, let's see. Uh, we need. Uh, and if I need to use any sovereign glue, I will. <laughs> oh, oh I like, sovereign glue is like when things just get slapped I together. A bunch of it. That's awesome. awesome. I will allow a sovereign glue to replace a failure. Ooh, Ooh okay. Oh. Once, one time only, yeah, that's right? right? Like, that's like, I'm down with that. Okay. All right. So let's see what we got here. Um, we only need so many of these. Uh, I need. Okay, I have a question. Is this going to be skills challenge beyond tinkering checks? Nope. Okay. You can do the same thing. You can keep spamming. Perfection. You can spam the same thing. However, I'm okay with that because you also don't have people here that give you like guidance. Yeah, like I'm like, like, yeah. So let's see. Um, DC for putting together something that you have seen before in practice, and this is kind of one of your character sticks is seeing IP ripping it off and doing it better. Sorry, this is a little bit meta game. Nerds kind of one of nerds tinkering things is like. Huh, how's that work? I think I can do that. But then doing it better than the people who did it. And not really getting that it's better. Yeah. Case in point, the black powder, case in point, the skiff, case in point, bobble gooks, okay. case in point, things that the Merchant Menace did. Anyway, so this is something you are naturally have a preclusion to being very good at. So I think the DC for this, with your tinkering check, is gonna be 17. Okay. And I think that I need Three successes before three fails. We'll keep it straight up. Okay. I think this is a pretty even thing. You've seen it. You've got all the parts. You've made something on a smaller scale. Um, and I'll also give you this. If you can succeed on, actually, whether or not you succeed or fail, I think this is probably enough to give you insight into future projects mm-hmm. that would maybe want to replace some of the more dangerous black powder type technology mm-hmm. with some of these technologies, which is obviously Learn something some different. Things. This seems right. more similar to what those fusitions yeah. were working on. So the black powder things. instead of some like. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait to hear what these things will be named. <laughs> so <laughs> as as you were, let's talk. Well, let's um, let's keep some of these things clean over here. Okay. Let's move from these things because I don't know if people can kind of see it. Let's talk about successes and failures. Let's get. The first one, um, and if you don't mind kind of narrating, let's kind of like freehand or I can kind of help. Um, finding and scrapping things. So you've, this first piece is this big repulsor disc mm-hmm. that you found that's already in your shelter. Um, talk to me about this first roll, just kind of assessing how the technology works and just getting, get wrap, wrapping your head around it. Um, I would like to stroke it in a loving way. Talking to it? Yeah. yeah. And then also hitting it when I don't feel like it's listening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so all right. I can just see this happening. So give me a roll. And so let's hear if it talks about Stop loving or if I can smash it. Um, that is 22. So, uh, all right. So talking to it lovingly. So it's getting some strokes. You hear a nerd kind of... You, no one else is there, but if it were there, you could kind of hear a nerd like... You know, pretty metal. Yeah. Talk to me, Goose. Here we go. Um, um, and then I'm going to assume from my short time mastering an airship um, that there should be some type of lever based system to control thrust and pitch. And yeah, stuff. yeah. How do you control it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. The fly by wire stuff. Let's talk to me about the second roll here. That was my second roll. <laughs> Yeah, no. Oh, roll. Yeah. Okay, sorry, yeah. sorry. I'm not talking about the like, like, I was like, no, no, that was. That was, yeah. <laughs> 23. Uh, ooh, oh, even right. better. Another another good one. Another good one. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so now you've got some of these. Um, you, you, what you've basically got right now is uh, um, what you've got right now is a, a hoverboard, <laughs> right? You've got a small oh, airship. It goes across water. Um, and you're, that, this is what you're basically doing. Now you've got. Something that hovers, so I need thrust. and you have something with some control. Thrust. What you're talking about now Nerd is thrust. The future. thrust. How do you get something exactly. high enough across water? If there's anything special you want to be adding to it that's like an augment, or if there's anything special you want to do for speed. I would like now to look for some kind of a sail action. All right. Because it's the world I know. Yeah. And then also some kind of... Uh, Oh no! Nope, not it. Stop! <laughs> what? This guy doesn't play CFDs. No. Yeah. <laughs> Don't anchor. <laughs> so, and then some kind of a propulsion-like thing, whether that's me packing some gunpowder jizz in it, 
or whether that's <laughs> mm-hmm. like some kind of weird little like anti graph push. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage and let's see like how well this these ideas work. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. So we have our first. Um, <clears throat> you have a problem. The first thing that you're noticing is that I'm not using glue. The fucking third one. There's a lot more weight. Whatever this stuff is, it's a lot heavier, and you're not used to like rockets and things. You're used to like these really thin exteriors and things that are really hollow. Whatever this is has a lot of components, and it's heavy. The things you're used to aren't giving it the oomph that you're that you're needing. Um, any other ideas? Or have to think outside the box here for the next attempts. Can I try to break the apoptosis sphere in half and like integrate it into the thing? Yeah, try to like, get a new power source. <laughs> yeah, you can. I mean, that's zero percent though. Like, I'm just like trying to like mimic circuitry for something. You're, trying, you're basically replacing things out. Yeah, like, uh, we'll say that you're like take. We'll say that you're. Um, it's a skills challenge. We'll say that there's a robbing a, a god to get an airship. <laughs> There's a connection that you're, you're yeah, used yeah, to using as like a yeah. spark. We'll say it's like a like a what's it called? Like a hammer, like a firing pin. Yeah. Okay. It's like a more of a you know explosion type combustion based yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, firing pin. And you have this idea of like actually it seems like this whole thing wants to convey energy from here to here, and this might be a better yeah. way. Of, and so you're basically taking you a to move the energy. you're just cramming you're just companioning uh, cramming this thing in there. Give me a, a roll. Let's see how well this works. How effective this is. Nat twenty. Oh no. <laughs> And that's the third one, right? So that's a um, thirty-one. Oh, the thirty-one. So you, um, as you cram this thing in there, it's got it, it, seats. it <laughs> um, it like it like the Delorean in an episode and like the yeah. second um, the second uh, Back to the Future. It kind of starts hovering in this kind of like um, unstable but predictably unstable pattern. I made um, the Mandos like oh, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's all like the it's like bad chrome and it's like um, but it's it functions. Uh, it's it's got pieces of, of this um, the black and teal uh, uh, paint that was on it at pieces, but it's mostly just a junk, uh, a, a junk uh, ship mm-hmm. at this point. It's got uh, um, like a sail, a little like maybe like a junk type boat. Um, with these kind of like makeshift sails off to one side, but it's got these symbolic blue. It's got one really large blue repulsor engine on the bottom, um, and then uh, it's just it functions more like a helicopter. Because there's only the one large repulsor, so as you need to go forward, you just kind of like tilt it, and you know, it's it's more of just like controlling that like tilt more than anything. So it almost functions more like a UFO at this point, uh, with you kind of riding the top of it, um, uh, on like a um, how are you again kind of strapping. And we'll say that now that you've succeeded, you're probably like spending the rest of the time like figuring out how to strap yourself to it um, and any other accoutrements. Uh, how about this? I will allow you one more roll of the dice. Okay. And this is for it already works. I want one to twenty, random luck, no tinkering skills, no mods, no nothing. And this is just to see. You want to add any accoutrements to it? Give me a roll, and we'll see how sweet those things are, and we'll talk about what they are. Oh, okay. Look. <clears throat> In the box. Very excited. In the box. <laughs> That's a six. A six. Yeah, All right. Um, so that's something perfect nerd. What's that something that's kind of what's something that's kind of lame, but is like a little modification you want to add to this thing? Fuzzy balls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like it's uh, so what kind of these, these dice? Are they balls? What are these things? Just like the like the little foam like cushion. Actually, balls? no. I do want it to be balls. I want it to be like mini apoptosis spheres. All right. Well, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of apoptosis. Sphere. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Um, but like once, let's say that's the thing that you got. Once you got the catalyst going, you still have them. So you yeah. have these two broken halves. Yeah. So you got these two broken halves. And you just kind of hang them over the the handlebars. Can't so the faster I go, it spreads. Oh god, I hate this thing. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know why I said this thing's got handlebars, but okay. I'm imagining that's handlebars. Fine. But all right, so it's like a swoop. You're good. Um, nerd. Um, what, anything else you want to be doing with this uh, airship? Another you've got. Yeah, it made? I want to. It takes you. I want probably... to. I want to paint letters on it. I want to put T O L I K A G N U. Hit, 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 mm, hit, hit me with that one more time. Totally kind. Of. Well, huh? Hit me with that one more time. T O L I K A G N U. First part of all of our names. Oh. Aww. Aww. That's sweet. Yeah. Tolikagnu? <laughs> well, he doesn't think the G's pronounced, but yeah. 
Oh yeah, total canoe. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I had to get my head around it. Okay. Um, so um, as you christen this thing, um, are you going to spend any more time sitting here? Are you going to kind of take off? This it's probably took probably. Day. I got thirty six hours, and I figured this took most of a day. You probably took. I was going to say this probably took an entire bit of a day. This is probably finishing up at about the time that you wish you could take us a rest. Yeah. But you know you don't have the time for and, it. And like honestly, his hope is like he knew that they were trying to take Kaz. So yeah. like, I think it's fair that he assumes that like they were taken because obviously he would have seen their corpses. Yeah, yeah, that's logical. So I feel like he's hoping they're like in the beast and can't be reached. Okay, like, so you were to keep hope alive. You kickstart this thing um, uh, like a like a motorcycle and mm -hmm. it uh, mm -hmm. begins to hover and you tilt it towards uh, the southwest and begin to race off at a, at a breakneck speed. This repulsor engine is. Um, maybe double what you're used to. It is, it is dangerous. Um, I, ima <laughs> I imagine, I was just gonna say like, don't let me put this on you. I imagine that what we see as Nerd takes off as what we hear in the distance is a maniacal laugh as Nerd is uh, worried about his friends, but it has like, is, is having a moment mm -hmm. as you take off. Um, you got a sick ride. Let's, awesome. Awesome. let's now cut, if you don't mind, two, oh. Uh, to totally oh, give her some, oh, give no, her some attention. Um, I'm here with your little tail. Here you go. Give her this. I don't think it's right though. So, um, let's cut to uh, I believe Kaz, Tarakas, and Lilith. Ooh. Are we all together? You are not. Okay. Each of you. <laughs> we'll describe a little bit about your uh, situations, uh, but you are uh, um, all of you. Um, are experiencing the same thing that you are uh, that you are alone because you're all in isol uh, in in isolation. You guys are all in a small. Always alone. You guys are all in a small room. These rooms are uh, these rooms are um, bright white, but there's a um, padding um, on the sides of the room. But there is um, a, a constant um, white light that is in this room. Um, you are unable to hear or see out of this room. There is a little small slit in the uh, in what looks to be a, a door that is also that is also padded. There is um, a, a covering on this on this slit in in the door, so you can't see outside of it. You also can't hear anything happening outside of the cell except for a jangly of what sounds like maybe some keys, because um, uh, it sounds like that's what's happening right now. Um, so uh, the one of the walls, um, as you guys are groggily coming to, so what is happening is that each of you are alone. Each of you are kind of blinking, your eyes open, and it is like you have woken up after a night of drinking. You guys are, each of you, um, sore. Like you've been asleep for too long. You know the feeling when you've slept, almost slept too much? Mm -hmm. You guys are sore. The other thing you can notice as you guys are blinking is that um, you guys, in the, at the moment, um, have uh, um, seem to have free range of motion until you realize that it's only your your um, your head, your hands, and your waist. Your feet seem to be manacled to um, this chair that you guys are in. It's a comfortable chair, but you are manacled feet wise to this chair. Hmm. After a few moments go by, the another feeling that is obvious to you is that you aren't you don't seem to be waking up fully. Lilith, you're used to this feeling a bit. It's almost like you're still drunk, but you are. <clears throat> um, I, can't, I don't know if it's ever if any of you have experienced this specifically um, to recognize it, but you are all um, uh, in different manners uh, drugged, sedated, not fully awake. You are very groggy. Um, then, after a few more moments, you can see that because um, again, you your hands. Your hands, your head, your, you know, basically everything except your feet it has free range of motion. And as you're kind of feeling around, you can see that your bodies have been bandaged. You have none of your belongings on you or in the room. Your clothes are gone. You are wearing black and teal, like one piece jumpsuits. Mm. This is not my color. It's not, <laughs> Lilith. It is not. <laughs> Yeah, she hates it. <laughs> yeah, um, come over here. Come back around. Come over here. Um, and the the uh, um, take that. The uh, these jumpsuits are a little bit baggy. They're definitely not flattering to the form. 
and uh, they are uh, all that you have. That is your at this point, all, your only possession is this jumpsuit. Is all you have. It is the only thing that you have um, on, on you. The room itself, you now notice, has this kind of very uh, kind of low pitched, quiet, uh, quiet sound. Um, that is kind of constantly, they're kind of like drowning out anything else, almost like a white noise. Um, the uh, one, uh, the wall that is uh, opposite from where you are, um, from the, the chair that you are in, each of you are in, um, blinks once and is no longer white and is now a, uh, uh, has a projection, is basically a screen that has a, a, an image projected on it. Um, and it says, um, again, each of you are alone in this room as you're getting this orientation. And it says, um, uh, and, and it's a it's a presentation that has kind of something in a, in, a, in a language that you guys don't quite understand, but there's a translation after each of these. Um, uh, it introduces you saying that you are um, you are being held in a uh, in a federation. Um, high security penitentiary operated by the Terrestrial Security Guild, the TSG. And there's this like kind of iconography of this guild everywhere. But this is what you're used to, right? You guys are used to like a guild is running everything at some point. This seems to be run by one of these Terrestrial Security Guild. Um, um, it does not give you a specific location. It just says you are being held in, in uh, um yeah because you're being you're being held in um you're being held in it would give you a number of like uh you're being held in uh installation 3b of this uh uh of the federation security guild uh high security uh prison system um this is these are the following things that you can expect in the coming days you will be assessed for physical and psychological health you will be uh, given a series of questions and tests. You will then be rendered uh, with a verdict from the three judges and be given a sentence. If that sentence involves a continued stay in this penitentiary, those, uh, that stay will be uh, determined by the judges and those uh, that duration will be met with um, You'll be surprised that this will be a, um, a very cleanly, uh, a very clean environment for you all to stay and uh, the, uh, live out the rest of your internment here um, while you would be given productive assignments to be working on. However, um, that would be uh, only after um, a verdict has been rendered. Uh, over the next several days, you'll be administering, you'll be given these tests and um, we hope that your stay will be as unintrusive as possible. Um, the presentation ends with, um, um, we find that it is important that while we often do not need to administer uh, uh, corrective actions, that any attempts to disobey or to harm inmates or other staff or to escape will be met with uh, swift corrective measures. Uh, we find that uh, inmates often um, do not uh, um, do not truly understand um, the swiftness of this um, and uh, the the scale of these things um, without actually uh, experiencing themselves. Um, so um, please prepare as we are administering a grade one corrective measure at 0.8 seconds now, and you guys feel that there is a an electric. A feel of like you guys can taste copper as there is an electric charge that seems to emanate from inside like the back from behind one of your eyes no. as you guys inside of your head is each of you uh, individually we'll say let's do this oh I forgot how we start yeah, I'm already dead let's talk yeah I forgot let's start I forgot to set everyone up well I need everyone to um, set their things too okay. is oh, everyone is gonna be set to half of your max HP I'll let you guys put that in. 
When you guys got that done, in the conditions, I need you all to put your conditions. Um, um, the condition is exhaustion. And all of you have five levels of exhaustion. Shit. Fuck. It means that, and you guys can read that with that up, it's basically it's speed halved. You're not able to move. You guys are so speed lethargic. Zero. Speed is zero. Yeah. Your yeah. HP max is halved. You have disadvantage on any checks pretty much. Um, yeah, at, at, um, it's the one above death. You guys are Ooh, feeling terrible. pretty bad. Um, uh, and as you guys feel this shock, so um, as you guys feel this shock, um, you guys each take, uh, that's not the right dice size. Okay. Um, you guys each take uh, 11 oh my. psychic damage as a jolt um, fires off inside from inside your head. Um, after you guys kind of regain your kind of composure after this, this, and this, like, just this kind of, like, arcs your body and kind of twists it in a way that's kind of unnatural. And as you guys kind of pick yourselves up off the, um, from this, from this kind of slouch in this chair, um, the presentation shows, uh, um, shows, uh, um, that, uh, a, a small, uh, maybe half inch capsule has been, um, has been administered into the uh, frontal cortex of each of your um, of each of your brains. That is going to ensure that any uh, all compliance is is um, uh, is followed uh, during your time here. Um, and we find that we don't have too many problems at these facilities, so we trust that you have a safe uh, stay. Um, and that, with that, the uh, presentation kind of snaps off, and you guys are left back with this. Simple flat white wall. Um, as you guys are each in this room alone, is there anything you guys would do alone in this room? Like yell at the wall, see if I can get the picture to come back. Mm -hmm. Where are my speaker's robes? Those were my dad's. Give me them back. Hello. Oh. 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 Mm -hmm. You reach up to touch your head, and you can see that as you touch up, you, there is a there are bandages around your head that you didn't you didn't know were there. You don't remember hitting your head in the in the during the fight. You remember taking some hits, but not to your head. I'm gonna feel around for like yeah, this band, you have like the stereotypical like head yeah, bandages. I want to see what it's covering up and just start taking it off. Yeah. Ah. As you unwrap it, see you can unwrap it mostly as you un as you unwrap it. Eventually, it comes off. You can see that there's blood only really in like one spot. Um, and it's kind of like towards like the center, like the kind of front side of your head. And you, as you unwrap it, you can see like there's just blood, and there's a little bit. It's like healing. There's a little bit of blood. You're kind of you don't have any hair to mat it down, but you can kind of feel that there's like a little I healing spot. Yeah, there's no wig. You're wigless. So what's my plan? You're upset about. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can kind of feel there a bit that there's there's something that is like a, a small round Ooh. hole that's healing. Yeah, we got any. Oh, anybody else doing anything in guys' rooms? Um, Lilith, you're lamenting the look of this these jumpsuits. Yeah, I wonder how everybody else is doing. But she's kind of like looking down at herself, like checking out the jumpsuit. Maybe she's gonna kind of like she can't obviously see herself because she's there's no mirror in here. But she's gonna kind of like. Touch your head and her face and like make sure everything's still there. Yeah. But similar yeah. bandages as Tarak. Yeah, same. You <laughs> reach up and touch it. Your hair has like been got kind of matted down. You look oh, like the no. dude from Royal Tenenbaums. I was gonna say shaved oh, it. No. Like an area to do, you know. Yeah. You're, I'm um, gonna have to. Oh, this is terrible. You leave it bandaged up. Yeah. She's not gonna touch you're it. She's gonna, scared um, to find out. Yeah. How bad the hair situation is. Okay. <laughs> oh, they probably might, they might have shaved the chump of it. Yeah, it's where she's worried about. But maybe she can rock that cool, like shaved side of the head look. You, like, you, yeah, you think for a moment about how like how well Kaz rocked the the shaved uh, the shaved one side head, the oh, undercut. Is that what's called? Like the mm -hmm. yeah. I think so. Um, the Kaz, anything you're you're doing in particular? You specifically, Kaz, can tell they um, um, whatever sedative. They're all, they all have. Mm -hmm. They might have given you a double dose. You, That's fair. your oh, tongue right. feels too big for your mouth, and <laughs> things are like as you move your head too fast. The room is almost like. If he feels nauseous, he will be. He'll probably throw up. Yeah. 
Um, so he's going to lean forward. Yeah. And make sick on the ground. Yeah. yeah. Like if that happens, it happens. Yeah. If not, sure. Um, there's a little bit. There's some like beige liquid. that just like there's a lot of it. It looks uh, like maybe ooh. you've been um, from the from the from how tired you are and how sore you are. Um, uh, yeah, it looks like these maybe like a day or two's worth of food that is some sort of beige liquid that is just kind of like on the ground. So you wonder how long maybe you've been here. He's not gonna like. He's not gonna like feel his head or anything because he just feels raw everywhere necessarily. Um, he's gonna try to rage. Yeah, this would be enough to to lose your shit. Uh, as you bring your, it's 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 was, huge. Kaz, yeah, normally yeah, it's he's just calling, he's just calling to, on everything that's in him. To well, see Kaz, what normally you don't have to think about this very much. Mm -hmm. This is a thing that just sort of fucking happens. You consider a situation, you hate it, and you get fucking mad. Um, <laughs> this is a this is a weird thing. You're having to like call upon this, okay. and this is something that as you reach out for it. Um, I almost need to like give like a little bit of a disclaimer here, a little bit like it's a bit like you are over medicated with whatever, like maybe a uh, like a like a like an antidepressant. You reach out for those those extreme feelings, mm -hmm. and they're just like. Not there. Nullified. Okay. It's like the edges have been fucking sanded off. And as much as you try and get mad about it, you think about like how wrong this is that you, this has been done to. But then you're like, you know what's clean here? <laughs> you know? It's, Except for that area in front of me. The bed is, yeah, like it's like this. You did sick up and like the cat, the, the actually the first thought you have, but what you kind of think is funny more than anything else is that this chair, this padded kind of mid-mod chair, Look great in the den. If you could just rip it off the bolts, it seems to be bolted to the ground. <laughs> so comfortable. Um, he's going to probably rest his head back on the edge of the chair where he is and close his eyes and try and sleep. Yeah. Everyone else kind of doing similar things after struggling for a bit. There's not much you can do. It'd be a few hours. If there's anything else you guys want to try, you're welcome to this first. Yeah, with how bad we feel. He's just kind of like if he can't even rage, oh, yeah. there's no way you can yeah. actually do anything. You yeah. you stew about that for a moment, Kaz, but sleep finds you like that, and you are out. Can I, Lilith and Tarakas. Can I look down just to see if the black mark is still on our hands? Yeah, it, 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 it does. Still there. There. Okay. Oh, they took my gloves. Damn it. <laughs> the owlbear gloves are gone. <laughs> Staff is gone. I just got all that stuff. All my treasures. All my treasures. Hmm. I'm just a very sad Aladdin right now. <laughs> so you spend a couple hours just considering the things that have been taken from you. How unfair. Just You know what? Just how unfair it all is. Kaz also thinks that he looks really good in the jumpsuit. Kaz is mm. rocking this jumpsuit. He looks great. Kaz, and again, your arms are free. You you don't have a lot of strength, but you don't have to fucking rage to rip the sleeves off these things if you really need it, ever wanted to. But you're welcome to, to looks, mod this however you might he want. He looks awesome. Or as Kaz, I can also see Kaz being the type that like takes the up the sleeves off and like zips it to the waist and like just, like wraps it. You know what I'm talking <laughs> yeah. about? Like, if it's like zipped, if it's like one know? of the long zip ones, like a flight suit, just the legs. That's it. He's definitely gonna like probably like, zip it down low mm -hmm. and just like yeah. be like comfortable. Like, like you can roll it up. You know, like people do in prison. He'll roll the sleeves up and he's just. In every prison yeah, movie. Wait. Um, well, so, tear his. Well, he looks amazing. <laughs> Trachis is tearing at his, but unable it's to tear it. It's not tearing at What is this material? <laughs> right? Oh, <laughs> really tight. <laughs> Goddamn polyester. Yeah. Um, so this is the scene. Eventually, you guys all find sleep after this uh, uh, very strange orientation into this place. Um, the scene will shift, and we see Nerd flying across a body of water, rubbing his eyes, tired with sleep, um, kind of like s snoozing and dozing, falling asleep on the handlebars, and as the as the airship kind of like hovers and you know tilts, you know lurches, nerd wakes back up, continues flying this, um, continues flying this uh, um, this airship, this makeshift airship, um, as far as he can, um, all through the night. Um, eventually. Uh, we'll 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 get to, we'll just kind of fast forward a bit, nerd. You to the following morning. 
it is now um, uh, the 76th of Kulara, the morning for, for Nerd. The body of water ends below you, and you get and you can see uh, in front of you these snowy peaks. Um, imagine uh, you know Antarctica if it was uh, the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. um, now that we've, I mean, this is spoilers for anybody that really hasn't watched the ep the series, but like, there is the Himalayas. So like it like the tallest one of the tallest mountain range ranges ah, are. Yeah this this um this antarctica this area so it is the um, the reason i'm bringing this up is that you can see this thing you can see the mountains almost mm -hmm. like they're coming straight up out of the water where you can see the um the, the 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 continent of um of nadir which is the southernmost continent it's really on like the, the south pole of this of this, of this globe is um there's not a lot of land mass around it that's usable mostly it is just a massive mountain range coming straight up out of the water um now that you guys kind of know the whole shtick it is basically everest and the surrounding peaks right <clears throat> just peeking up out of the water so you can see some of the edges around it are, are um or there's not a ton of land so you can't see it coming up on it but you do see these massive snow-capped peaks um jutting up out of the water and as you're coming up closer on the airship you can see that there are small little villages they aren't like on any map there's just like little fishing villages mm -hmm. uh, along the coastline um, of people that make their living here, they make their life here. But you know that Ember Falls kind of along this coastline, probably another like most of the day. So it would probably be probably evening mm -hmm. after another full day of travel. You would have at least one level of exhaustion that, um, mm -hmm. from not sleeping. I don't think you would get two yet until you would kind of choose not to sleep another night. I think yep. is how that works. Yep. Um, so you'd be coming into Ember Fall. Um, as the energy that you've there's not a lot of energy left in this airship and you're kind of sputtering in mm -hmm. over the ocean you've already kind of chosen to stay over the coastlines just in case um, you definitely want to ditch it in this cold water uh, but you do make it to the outskirts of Emberfall um, and again this looks like a kind of a mining town if you if I had to compare it to anything um, there are uh, a lot of sled dogs uh, around the area because it seems to be this is how they get around. In the docking area? There are ships in the docking area. Um, there are uh, there are always lots of ships here. And this is. Um, I want to look like they have a horny demon. In it. Um, there <laughs> is. Uh, um, uh, there is in fact no ship that you recognize oh, yeah, in the docks. Um, you know, the ship that you saw was, you know, a little bit, almost, it was fairly conspicuous. It looked like she's kind of like trying, coming into a final form of like, fuck it. Let's go ostentatious to mm -hmm. a fault. And, but this doesn't have, doesn't seem to be, um, that ship is also so big that like, you know, it would only fit into one or two of the larger berths here. Mm -hmm. Um, doesn't seem to be here. Um, from, uh, uh, from sailing with her for, what was it? A couple decades? Yeah. You know her mo is often to not pull up into dock yeah, with sense. her own ship yep one of her favorite things to do is either to show up in another ship but she would also one of the things she would often do is to have like a um there's got to be a term for this but she would kite uh, another smaller stolen ship with a skeleton crew nearby and so she would just like pillage a ship and kind of keep it kind of like mm -hmm. as a small fleet right and then whenever they needed to actually go somewhere, they would just hop on this other nondescript ship mm -hmm. and leave them. It's like an away ship, if mm -hmm. you will. And it was a, a burner, if you will. So if ship went south in a the city, they, they could just, you know, fuck that ship. Yeah. It's a shuttlecraft. Away ship. It's an away ship. Um, <laughs> so the same fucking thing. <laughs> it's not surprising to you that her, her kind of, her, her, uh, her flagship isn't here. Um, but you, you see a number of ships that look a little bit run down, that may have been in a, a, a scuffle recently, that you think like might be going undergoing repairs. One isn't undergoing any repairs, and with a, I mean, with a passive insight, you can probably guess like, why wouldn't someone be fixing that ship at so, all? Okay, so but it's, I had three days to get there. Yep. So I had construction day. So Full. Like, what day is this? Is this a day two to have a travel? Three? This is like day 2.5. You got there with about one day to spare. Okay, because then I want to take a long rest before I face this bitch. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll allow it. I want to have yeah. skill rolls. And where do you want to leave this? And where do you want to leave this? Where do you want to leave this thing? This makeshift. 
Did you see that? Did your yeah. ice cube like pop? Spit at me. <laughs> sure. Drink it. Um, Coca Cola. Fit in the bag of holding. Uh, we're sponsored by Coca Cola, the fresh maker. I don't think that's right. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna that's get this yeah. Um, yeah, Actually, don't combine the two. Oh, uh, that would be interesting. Though. Though. Um, but where do you want to leave this thing? Mess uh, this... maker. That's what it is. Mentos and Coke. The mess maker. I would like to leave it approximately 457 feet outside of town and buried in the snow. Okay, so you're gonna like, step it off a little bit and try and like bury it in the snow. It might take a little bit, but you know. Um, if you want, we'll say that you can take a few hours. Um, you can bury it a bit. Uh, it's going to take Unless you... it fits in the bag of holding, which it doesn't. It's not going to fit in the bag of holding. Um, give me a d20 roll, because you don't have a ton of time on how, much you, how well you can hide this thing. Well, wait, 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 wait. Get a disadvantage. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I bumped it. It did? Well, it doesn't matter. This yeah, is the lower one. Yeah, um, so, what am I rolling? Uh, I will allow you to do a survival. We're going to give some... Camouflage for this thing. Nine. Nine. You know, it's snow. Um, <laughs> it's not the best cover-up job, but you know, like if you're gonna get a full night's rest before you and still make the cutoff, you need to probably get going. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's passable, but also you as you're walking away, you're like, don't gonna fucking come out this way. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you continue to cut off the steps, so you know exactly uh, how far yep. it is away from the. Yep. So as you get in towards uh, the town, um, you can hear the, the barking of some sled dogs and um, the sound of commotion, um, and you have a nose for it. There's a seedy establishment um, that is on this main drag that you, know, you just know where to go. Um, is there a non-seedy establishment? Where to go looking. Uh, yeah, there is. Um, there's a little bit. Um... I want to go where she's not. So you want to go where she's not going to be at? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you go to uh, um, uh, a pretty... Uh, one place that is a little bit nicer. Where's a nicer place here? Let's talk about this. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, so you, um, I'm gonna write this down so I don't forget about it. So you uh, enter uh, this one place that is pretty nice. There's a piano playing, um, um, it seems to be playing itself in the corner. Uh, a jaunty little tune. Then the sign on the above says, "This is the Golden Canopy," and it is um, a, kind of a place that has velvet in places that probably don't need it, um, just posh for no reason. Um, it's not the most well attended because there aren't a lot of posh people here in the ass end of the world. Yeah. So um, there's a bartender that is giving you his full attention. Um, his uh, handlebar mustache as he's wiping down a glass um, and says, uh, ask for what you'd like. Hey, dweeb, why don't you need a fucking room and I also need some fish milk, stat. Um, as he uh, just doesn't respond and just kind of nods and wipes down the glass, um, uh, slides a key, um, um, slides a key over kind of halfway um, and uh, has um, the a glass and there's Two parts. This place is so fancy. There's actually a, a bouillon, like a cube of fish bouillon, and then they have like the, they seem like they've heard about it. Uh, now that they um, are, there's like a, uh, a pour over of warm, warm water, and they like have the steamed fish milk that like separates warm water. them. Yeah. yeah, it's warm because they make it like it's they pour it over this cube, what and as it expands. Ooh, fancy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> as he said. <laughs> You notice that this is actually branded. It looks like there's a fish milk brand oh, okay. that is now being sold. That is, uh, um, light. <laughs> uh, and he's, he's offering this to you. Um, he says, uh, uh, the worst words he says would be, um, uh, for a point of fish milk in a one room, one night is, a uh, we'll say gold piece. All okay. right. Uh, meals are from seven to 10. Okay. You have any bags that we need help help you up with, or touch my shit? I fucking kill you. Noted. We yeah. offer that service for free. Wait, wait, what? What service? Not touching any shit. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll uh, do us to send any more uh, milks up to the room. Sure. Why not? Um. So they yeah. uh, you're you're shown to a room. You're it's up a it's up a flight of stairs. It doesn't sound like to a lot of too many other people here. Um, but you've got a key to a room. It's a small little. It's not the. Um, it's it's not the largest room, but it's nice. Um, yeah. It's got its own little bathroom area. It's got a little washroom. Uh, it's got uh, 
two beds um, in this room. You only need the one. But uh, there's a window that to the outside. And it's got a heavy little curtain. It's pretty nice. Cut the fucking bed open goes late. Slice it open. <laughs> Feathers just kind of like come out like a feathery tauntaun and you just sl- slide right inside of it. Um, let's cut That's back. Right, it. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> that it smells bad. Yeah. Let's cut back. So the following morning, it is now the 70. Um, well, you guys don't know when it is. Um, it is, you guys are all waking up again the next morning. You, um, we'll start one by one. Trachus. You awake with a start as the door in front of you is open, and it's um, unsettling because you know you um, you uh, are used to kind of not hearing anything. Uh, there's just you know that simple tone, and then um, the door is opening. You are still shackled by the feet to this uh, to this chair. Um, uh, you have one less level of exhaustion, so you now okay. at level four okay. exhaustion. Okay, okay, I'm gonna change it. Please. Do you want to me? I really need to go pee. You are, your shackles are not removed necessarily, mm-hmm. but they are detached from the chair that you are on. Okay. And as there are two enforcers, you can see now that there are two enforcers that stay at the door and two enforcers that enter the room. Each of one, uh, each of them uh, grab uh, one of your arms, lift you up, and begin to pretty roughly escort you. You you don't have to worry about your speed because they're not really waiting for you. They're almost like lifting and almost dragging you even though you have a half your speed. They're not really giving you a chance to use it. Um, As you're being kind of directed, dragged to, to your point, to a, uh, um, down a hallway. And you can see that there are other of these, looks like white uh, doorways with uh, slats that are closed. And there are numbers on each, uh, beside each of the doors. Uh, you can see down this hallway, there are there is easily a dozen of these doors on each side of the hallway. And you can see that the light, again, bright white, kind of goes down the hallway. Um, and you are directed past many of these uh, rooms until you get to um, one that doesn't have a, a door on it. It is open, and it seems to be, have a, several strange receptacles on it, one of which is fairly familiar to you. Is it looks like kind of like a urinal. Hmm. Um, or at least a kind of a squatty potty kind of thing. Yeah. And it is an open, again, it's open door. You are kind of placed in front of it and you are directed to do your to do your business. But they're not leaving your side. All right, turn your head, you guys. Not like last time. <laughs> they turn around and allow you to do your business. Yeah. <laughs> As you kind of laugh into yourself, you look around. Um, your passive perception is enough, you can see, because they're not hiding them at this point. Yeah. There are eyes everywhere. You can see in every corner, like in every... A corner of the wall in every room there are clusters like spider eyes there's like about a dozen in each corner little lenses of different sizes similar to the drone eyes but there are little clusters of them in each corner kind of just watching you and as you kind of laugh to yourself you can look up and you see one of them just kind of like I like the way the walls and ceilings talk to me they make noises anyway the uh, as they as you finish doing your business, they do um, grab you and bring you along to another room, and it's, it's just—it looks similar to the room that you are at your, to, to your cell. It's all white. It is um, uh, has a, a chair in it that they bring you into. They again, um, uh, shackle your uh, connect your sha- uh, feet shackles to the to the chair to this chair. Except this room has a table in front of it. And the table's just far enough ahead that you can't quite put your hands on it, like you couldn't lean on it, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like a table in front of you, like kind of at arm's length. There's another chair on the other side of it that is a different chair. It's not shackled, it doesn't have um, connections or anything like that. It's just a kind of a plastic white chair, like a, like a folding chair almost. The room is empty and they bring you in they strap you to this 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 uh, this chair, and then all of these enforcers that leave, leaving you in this room by yourself. The uh, this kind of white noise tone is still present um, in this room, and you can kind of sense the silence more than anything else. And then the lights in the room go out, and you're left in pretty much pitch black, pitch black. And then there is a low light from oops that's not the right one there's a low light from below 
um, from like kind of the, the the floor, the edges of the floor. Okay. It's a very dim light, and it kind of like casts this kind of um, kind of menacing glow up from the bottom, um, kind of undercasting. You know how like you know you tell ghost stories, like this lights up from the bottom, and it puts this effect on everything in the room. And you're kind of left in there for a moment as this um, uh, how to describe? It? I guess as this uh, as this uh, room changes a bit, and you're left until the door opens again, and a uh, it looks to be a, uh, a male humanoid is entering the room. They have um, they're not dressed like an enforcer. They have um, they have uh, the black jumpsuit on, similar that, that represent the the terrestrial security guild that you're used to. But they have a white lab coat on. They have a couple other things, but they have a clipboard in their hands as well, and they enter the room with you. Tarakas and set this clipboard down and take a seat across the table from you. Hi. Um, good morning. What room is this, and why does it change colors? Uh, this is the. Um, uh, I see. I, he kind of looks at this clipboard and says, "I can see this is your first time here. This is the. Uh, this is one of our assessment rooms that we have here in the facility, um, where we conduct some of our uh, some of the uh, the tests that are necessary." Uh, to um, determine the uh, psychological state of some of our of our of our inmates, um, what we'll be doing, uh, and this guy's got um, this guy has kind of a, what looks to be like a little plastic pencil. This is sort of like a little digital kind of like a digital notepad, if you will, with a little steno pad. Is what this guy's got. Um, he's got a uh, a thick mustache. It looks like um, like a not a Ron Burgundy. What's the guy in Parks and Rec? Oh, he's oh, great. Ron Swanson. Ron Swanson. Swanson. What's yeah. that guy's name? That guy's great. I can't, oh, I can't I don't know. Know. Oh, it's Megan Mullally, but yeah. I his name. Anyway, that guy's mustache. Um, <laughs> I feel terrible for not knowing it. Something's a new, new... I don't know. We'll figure it out. They're screaming. They're screaming on there right now at us. Um, so the... <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> no. This guy's uh, got like that uh, serious mustache and this white coat. And um, he's looking at your a clipboard and he says, um, uh, yeah, I see that this is your uh, this is your first test here. Um, he's kind of tapping the, tapping the clipboard, and he's kind of taps his, kind of like, taps his thing, pulls out. He's got like a little pack in his um, lab coat, and as he's considering, he's just kind of considering the clipboard. And he says, hmm. "So Tarakas, is it? Is, it, is that how you pronounce it? Tarakas Umber Frail? No, Frale or Frail? No. <laughs> no. It's important. I mean, Frale. these these tests are important to assess the." You know how you will be. You know how you'll be treated, and you know how your your verdict might be administered. But also you know, your your future here in this facility. It's important that it's we get uh, 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 an accurate baseline. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd advise that you you know you, you participate. I can't force you to um, unless you don't want to. But you know it, it would be in your best interest. But um, um, as we you know, I find that it's usually good to uh, build a rapport. Uh, you know, do, would you do you mind if I um, do you mind if I smoke while I'm well, I'm in here. It's a horrible habit, I, I, I know, oh, but... Yeah, yeah, if you want to, yeah. I, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't be some, uh, one to stop somebody from, you know, wanting to do something comfortable for him. Appreciate that. He'll he'll, 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 he'll tap one out, and he'll... Um, and these are just, like, like rolled cigarello-type things, and um, um, he'll set them on the table. He'll, he'll offer one to you if, you, if you want. Yeah, okay, sure. And he'll, he'll offer you one of these cigarettes, uh, cigarellos, and... Um, he kind of lights his, and he'll offer you, he'll, he'll light yours as well. No, oh, thank you. I'll just say He's kind of have it. He's called it. He yeah. considers it. Um, he takes a couple, pulls off of his, and he's kind of still considering the the, the, the clipboard and says, um, well, okay, uh, uh, if you don't mind, we'll I'll begin here. And he uh, uh, reaches into a, a, brief, a small briefcase and brings out, um, it's a small contraption. Um, it's a small box. It starts off as a small box. And he sets it in the middle of the table, and he raises one side of it. Um, it the shape of it, it's hard to actually perfect example. You guys remember Elmo machines from school? Mm-hmm. Overheads, overhead oh, projectors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, okay. um, it's a similar shape, only smaller. And so it's got like a, a square base, and it's got like a, a neck or an arm that kind of comes up, and on the top of that arm, as it as it you know as he as he lifts it up, like an like antenna kind of thing, only thicker. Mm-hmm. On the top of this thing, um, there is another. There's three of these lenses. Much like the drone, well, then these are larger, kind of a higher fidelity, and each of these three lenses seem to be the apertures seem to be tightening and widening and considering you, Tarakas, individually. And each of these three have a dull red glow, a little bit unsettling. As this machine is sitting in the middle of the uh, 
the, the table just looking at you, considering you. And these three lights look like they are looking straight through you. This is unsettling. I don't know what that thing is, but don't it's a... don't pay attention. To, does you don't need to uh, pay too many uh, too much attention to the device. The device is not important to the test. If you uh, this test is going to be um, uh, um, this test is going to be uh, uh, you've already gotten your uh, physical assessments. We've already uh, got the initial results back, and you all uh, you look healthy, but. Um, as we're late, waiting on some of your blood work, with this um, this specific test is again, like I mentioned, to get a baseline on your psychological state and some of your individual preclusions. Uh, um, it's important uh, that you respond with um, to the following questions with what your uh, reaction might be uh, in some of these scenarios. Uh, just your quick reaction. Don't overthink it. It's just the first idea that comes to mind. Okay. Yeah. Um. Sure. All right. Um, and the uh, uh, as he taps the clipboard and begins an, uh, asking some of these questions um, uh, he considers this um, considers this uh, these questions and as you ask the first one he says um, uh, let's see uh, describe if you don't mind for me in single words uh, the only only the good things that come to mind about your mother <laughs> my mother strong unwielding strict but caring. Good. All right, that's good. He takes some notes. He says, um, "I found a couple questions no more. Uh, we'll say that um, say it's your birthday. Uh, it's on your birthday, and you're you're enjoying some cake, and then someone at this party gives you a gift of a goblin skinned wallet. Okay. Yeah. Do you accept the gift? <laughs> um. No." He taps again and considers the next question and says, All right, you're alone in a barn. There's no hay on the floor, and a ewe is giving birth. Some, something's wrong, though. This land, though, is, seems to be trapped in the birth canal. This ewe seems to be having trouble giving birth. It is screaming. There's, there's oh, blood and there's yeah. placenta on oh, the floor. It's a oh, very okay. visceral experience. Yeah. What do you yeah. do? What do I do about what? What do you do? The ewe's screaming. Well, that, I, there's nobody else around. You're the only one around. Oh, there's a. I I don't know about animals that well. That well. I'll break its neck. You're in a desert. Walking by marks again. He says, um, uh, "This uh, and this this continues on for uh, for uh, this continues on for a time. Um, eventually, uh, uh, let's cut to um, let's cut to uh, Lilith. You are." Um, you are in, uh, you have had a similar situation that, that we've just described with Traka. So you have been, you've woken up, you've been drugged into a room, um, uh, uh, you've been allowed a chance to use the facilities um, uh, as well. Um, did I lose a level of exhaustion? You did. You also okay. lost a level of exhaustion. I'm going to mark um, that. The, uh, the, uh, you also notice these these eyeballs, these clusters of eyeballs in every corner. Mm -hmm. um, there's some in your cell. That you notice there's some in the hallway. There's one in there, and there's also some in this room that you're in. Um, and this table um, again, it's an empty room. Same thing. The lights are on. You're brought in. The lights go dim, and there's this low light as um, uh, and you don't know if it's happening at the same time. We don't know the, the the viewers don't know if this is happening at the same time, a different time, another day. But the image will cut at the same time to Lilith. Um, you have gotten the same orientation, but this person also comes in and is having a similar conversation with you about. Uh, um, you know, this is a psychological evaluation. You no, know, we'll be doing these um, the following tests to determine you know your placement here at the facility, as well as your uh, your psychological conditions and um, sort of your preclusions. Um, um, you have been uh, uh, looks here in your file that you've been flagged as a as an anomaly by these judges, and um, uh, they want to know a little bit more about uh, uh, about some of your 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 personalities and your um, psychological states to see if there's patterns that they can find. Um, if you don't mind, uh, it's the same situation, the same thing. This person's going to kind of bring out um, have a pack of uh, these cigarellos. Um, he says, you know, it's important to bring a, a report. Do you mind if do you mind if I smoke while we administer the test? Is there, first off, is there anything we can get you while we uh, administer the test? Anything to drink? Can Maybe. I have my pipe? Um, he, say, he looks and says, um, 
we can consider that. Um, he kind of like he kind of um, kind of holds a button on his lapel and says, um, uh, "Could we check uh, their uh, Lilith's belongings to see if there's a pipe? Can you maybe uh, give it's it a like about this long?" And it's just, it's carved kind of like a little dragon at the end. Yeah, he's like, give it a full, give it a full, give it a full identification scan and um, let's make sure that it's uh, safe before we... Right. Thank you. And then uh, he lets go of the lapel pin. He says, we'll see what we can do. Um, um, they might bring it in the next few minutes, but, um, you know, we'll see. They'll have to identify to make sure that it's, right. uh, it's an innocuous item. We won't be able to leave it with you, but maybe during these meetings with something that we could, we give you with good behavior. Okay. Um, do you mind if I smoke in the interim, or do you would you it's like okay. would you like one of these cigarellos? No, I'll wait for my pipe. Yeah. Um, he uh, similar considering your 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 can uh, your this clipboard says uh, says here um all we have here down is is this Lilith. Uh, is there a, a last name that uh, that you're known as, or do you have family family members? Just Lilith. Just Lilith. He marks it down and says hmm. says like. It's like a singer. It's, yeah. um, uh, he, he goes. He says, "Now, what we're about to be doing is um, again, like I said, a psychological test, and this is something that's uh, again, we're going to be giving you a series of situations and scenarios, and it's important that you respond to these scenarios as quickly as possible." Um, the uh, uh, do you mind if we start the test now? The I suppose the uh, the lights again are uh, low in the room. The uh, 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 smoke is kind of trailing around this guy's head, and this the same device that we described at Tarakas is up. And as this test begins, um, this kind of like low tone is now even more obvious in your head. Um, and these three lights are again considering every one of your like eye movements and body uh, body uh, language changes as you are answering these questions. Um, and there's a little, there's a quick montage as we can hear Tarakas' answers overlaid over yours mm -hmm. as the, the responses begin to get uh, rapid fire. And you get, um, the viewers would get the sense of, you guys are undergoing this for hours, maybe multiple hours as you guys are going undergoing this. But we'll do a few. So uh, Lilith, um, you get the same, you get a few of the same ones. And just for effect, we'll give you some of the same ones as, uh, um, as you are as the viewer watches you uh, lean into it, it starts off fun, right? It's just a series of questions, but as they start to speed up, you get similar ones. So, um, Lilith, it's your birthday. You're you're at a, you're at a, you're enjoying your cake. People are passing around gifts, and as you're opening your gifts, one of them is a, um, a well-made uh, and freshly uh, created uh, goblin skin wallet with your name on it. Do you accept the gift? Goblin skin? Yes. Well how did they get it? You, you don't know. Me? They look at you expectantly. Mm. Smiling. Who, who gave it to me? A loved one. Well, of course I'll accept it from a loved one. Interesting. Um, you've got a, you've had a young boy, a small child. Um, he is always, he's always in a good mood and very curious. As he, sh as he takes your hand and leads you into his room, he shows you he shows you a collection of small rabbits. These rabbits are all next twisted and on a, uh, and pinned to a dissection wall. That's not right. <laughs> That's just, you shouldn't do that to rabbits. Rabbits are meant to be cuddled and loved and little petted. You're in a desert and you're walking along the sand when all of a sudden you look down and you see a tortoise and it's crawling towards you. You reach down and you flip the tortoise over you flip the tortoise over onto its back. I did not. The tortoise lays on its back, its belly baking in the hot sun, beating its legs, trying to turn itself over, but it can't, not without your help. Well, I never would have flipped it in the first you're, place. But you're not helping. Why is that? I would have helped it. I would have picked it up and taken it with me and gotten it to its destination faster. The, uh, the questions continue until you get into uh, um, a series that are, um, what would it take for you to, um, what would it take for you to turn on a loved one? No. It doesn't A close happen. friend has, the close friend has shared with you that they have um, 
that they have romantic feelings for someone that you have a crush on, how do you respond? Um, next question, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, they, uh, he, he kind of hmm, and makes and makes another note. Kaz, let's switch. Let's flip over to you. Um, you've had the same orientation. You've had the same uh, person um, um, offer. We'll cut to the point where they offer you. Um, is there anything we can get you to drink? Is there anything that would you mind if I smoke during the, the assessment? Would it make you more comfortable in uh, my presence? It, it, it would, actually. It, does. it seems to calm my nerves a bit. It's a horrible habit, but it does seem to steady my hand. You're welcome to have... Would you like one? I do not need it. Um, and he so, he so nods and makes a note and says... Well, like I said, do you mind if we begin the test? Um, uh, again, there's the overlay of you hear Tarakas and Lilith's questions and responses as the montage kind of goes back and forth as um, Kaz's very deadpan face is responding to these questions. We'll have a couple of Kaz's. Kaz, well, um, a couple of the ones that you've already heard. Um, um, you know, uh, you are um, you're walking in the market. And suddenly, you realize that there's a wasp crawling on the neck of your companion walking next next to you. What do you do? I flick it away. Picture your mother in the house that you grew up in. She looks at you, disappointed, and tells you that she doesn't love you. That she never loved you, and that she regrets having you. What do you do? Nothing. You're passing a busy street corner on the way to a friend's apartment, and you see a small cardboard box next to a dumpster. Inside it is a tabby cat. A kitten, really. A real one with green eyes and a, a white spot on her nose yelling for food. What do you do? I take it with me. You're in a situation where you have an opportunity to do um, something very good in the world, have a very, have a large impact, but it requires you to cause the death of a of an innocent. What do you do? I Please, reaction time is important in this test. Then maybe stay quiet while I answer. I will do it. I um, mean, they make a note and they uh, kind of continue on. Um, there's more and more of this uh, of this uh, of this uh, montage. Again, it seems to be going on for a while. You got, each of you are undergoing this onslaught for um, a uh, a a unhealthy amount of time. Um, but eventually, you guys are exhausted. The sound stops. The room lights. Um, actually come back on. It almost hurts your eyes at the moment. The uh, the person across from you attaches the pen to the clipboard, taps it a few times, stands up, and leaves the room. The enforcers come back in, pick you up, and escort you back to your rooms. What a day. <laughs> You're alone. At no point do you see anyone else other than yourselves, and eventually you are back in your cells, um, able to consider the day, but you are mentally and physically now exhausted. Yeah, you're also one level exhaustion down, so you're level four. Okay. Is there anything else you guys would like to be doing during this, this day now that you're back in your cells? Um, now that he's back in his cell sitting in the chair, um, he's going to meditate, but not, like... Not like normal? Yeah. How's it different? He's just sitting like he normally would, but he's just going to close his eyes. It's just going to be... He's just internally doing whatever he needs to do. Mm -hmm. Just gonna centering instead of trying... to show on for anybody yeah. for any reason. Okay. Um, yeah, like uh, the secret to any, like to, you know, to TM is that really you can do it sitting in a car, you can do it anywhere. So um, Kaz uh, sits quietly and begins to center himself. Anybody else doing anything? Or are you guys just kind of finding sleep, looking to get less exhaustion? I mean, she's probably going to do her trance thing. 
Come. Come. Uh, yeah. And Torox is gonna... Alright, Narita. I know I haven't been calling on you much lately, but it seems like I really need your help now. I got myself in quite a pickle, and I think my friends are too. Anything you can do to help us get out of this situation, now is the time to do it. Come on, show me your big guns. And I want to roll my uh, <laughs> divine intervention, if I can. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Welcome, <laughs> show me your guns. Your big guns. Wait, no, hold on. That's a d20. Nerd I'm supposed to be Yeah, you need a d100, right? That's right, yeah. Are you trying to get below a 5 or a 10? His level. My level. Below well, your level. His level or lower. Your level or lower. There you go. Okay. To try to below 12. Nope. 66. Yeah. Wow, that sucks. There's a... Yeah, I heard the old faith. Um, there's no cube with you to, to look to. Oh. And the room's sort of like... You, all you hear is this... Constant tone. So anticlimactic. Maybe I'll burn one of the guards in the face later. Yeah. I'll sleep hmm. on it. It's, sleep comes pretty quickly if you if you want. Lilith, anything else? Sleeping? Yeah, she's okay. yeah, just gonna sleep. All right. I think as we end that day, um, we'll be coming back to Nerd. But before we come back to Nerd on that following day. Let's take a quick break, because I believe we've been going for about an hour and a half. Yeah. Believe, yeah. Let's take about a five minute break. Join us back here to see the uh, see how see they get out of this one. Be right back, y'all. <laughs>
right. Welcome back, everyone. That's a land. Welcome back, everyone. The before the break, the heroes had been split up and still remain so. Nerd um, is trying to get back in touch with his former captain and is now in the southern continent of Nadir. After creating a makeshift airship, makeshift airship and flying it um, uh, breakneck speed throughout the night um, to get uh, bef- uh, to where the uh, captain and her crew are located before they leave and embark on their next ship, uh, their next voyage. The rest of the party, Lilith, Tarakas, and Kaz, have been captured and are somewhere in Venkirk at a high security uh, penitentiary where they are undergoing some psychological tests. Mm. But we are returning back to Nerd. It is now the... um, Is this now, I believe, after the the long rest? This is now the 76th? 77th. 7th. 7th. Yes, thank you. I was looking at the wrong thing. 77th. I'll keep that one up. You have like two columns, one for you and one for me now. Well, I just put Nerd in front of it. (laughs) Because I don't know what day it is for me. Yeah. Um... The best day. The best day. It's been a weird day. It's been a weird day. So the uh, nerd picking back up on the 77th. It, uh, you wake up um, uh, in this pretty nice establishment that we uh, that you had uh, stayed in the night before to rest up, um, uh, removing your level of exhaustion. Um, you know that you have maybe. You are cutting it close. It, it's been about 32 hours of the 36. You know, you're cutting it close. Yeah. But you also know where you can probably find her. Yep. The ship that you saw in the port that was pretty banged up and not getting repaired, strangely, seems to still be there. Right. So you... <laughs> I head out to it. Um, as you head out to that ship, um, there is... You're early enough that uh, there is... Um, still, there's only a few people on the ship still. Um, it looks like the main crew has not arrived back yet from wherever they mm-hmm. were staying. So they have, um, they have, uh, uh, they're, not, they're not there, but there are a few, like a skeleton crew is there, like manning the ship, getting it ready. Um, you don't recognize many of the faces on the, um, on the ship itself. And you're going to get a little worried because you're kind of like, is this the right one? Did you, or maybe you're... Oh, no, fuck it, I go up to the helm. So you, you just kind of walk straight up to the helm. <laughs> you get a lot of, of strange looks from people that you are not, that you're not familiar with. Um, and uh, 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 eventually there is somebody that, you, again, you're not, you're not familiar with, um, um, catches you and, and begins to um, signal from the, from the cargo hold. They're kind of like popping your head up. They're like, oi! Get the hell off the ship! You know, get the get the hell off the ship! We and they begin to like shout obscenities um, at you, and some of the other people that were like the skeleton crew can begin to be like, "Oh, does this? We thought it was okay." And they start to like kind of ruffle up. About the time it looks like it's shaping up to be something that maybe it's going to be an issue, mm-hmm. you see that there are coming up from the road uh, um, a kind of a shadow, uh, shadow because the, the sun's kind of rising. You can see there is the silhouette of. Will look to be the rest of the crew. It's about a half dozen people coming, with a stumbling pace, um, kind of groggy from whatever they'd been up to the night before, led by someone with a uh, tri-cornered hat um, and horns that you are that you have not seen in a while. This is a tiefling with terracotta-colored um, skin. There is a, um, a high-necked kind of coat with long, uh, long coats with lots of. Um, very uh, ostentatious buttons on it. Um, what color is this coat? Is it purple? What's a good color for her? I don't know. I thought we at one point had a painted mini. I thought it was like I never actually painted it. Okay, cool. I, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to be so time ago that you had that you had. I don't think we painted it actually. It's not painted yet. No, I have like okay. the painted screenshots. Okay. Well, anyway, so what to yeah. some, if you had painted something, I'd like to do something else. So she's got a very stereotypical kind of pirate coat, long coat on, um, this tri cornered hat. Um, there are. Uh, a litany of small firearms strapped to her. She has um, that you, as you see her walking up. There's like three or four just kind of strapped to the front of her. Um, as you see, she's walking, you can see there's a small one kind of like strapped to her calf. There are several knives. She also has a a, a, a sword um, kind of swinging at, at her side. Um, there is um, uh, 
uh, a confidence in her walk as it's almost like a flying V as the rest of the crew is kind of fanning out around her. It's and like a purple leaf. Nerd, you can see that um, this this silhouette is swinging up onto the onto the deck of the ship, and as the rest of this uh, crew um, comes on board, you notice that beyond beyond the captain Jamila. Um, how do you how do you I always called it the wrong thing? Is it Jamila? How do you say it? I think I've always fucked it up. I call her Captain. Well, you call her Captain. Well, like out of, out of character, how would you say the first name? I don't know, Jamila. Jamila. Okay. I don't know. I, I, don't know. I just didn't know if I was doing it wrong or not. Um, but the Captain Suresh is um, only one of two that you recognize. Along with her is another face that you recognize. This is Rajit, um, Rajit Mendoza of your former crew. These are the only two people that you recognize. Um, Rajit was a Erganasi, the navigator, yep. um, also of the uh, fallen demon that you were uh, uh, on the crew with. But Rajit and uh, Captain are the only faces that you recognize. Everyone else here is a is is new blood. It, mm-hmm. it seems like, um, and they're all looking at you uh, with what looks to be at best a sneer, and. Um, the way that the crew and the captain have kind of set this up now is that you are now kind of on the 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 helm itself around the helm like that like mm-hmm. quarter deck where we want to call it and they have kind of like fanned out um just kind of like making space in the semicircle but it also as you realize it also is effectively surrounding you mm-hmm. and cutting off any escape off the ship other than the off the back mm-hmm. um but other than that not menacing well i mean they don't know that you, you know that but they don't know that um but they seem to be common practice kind of cutting off the ship um the a few people seem to have their hands on their weapons. Um, the captain herself is lounging, kind of holding onto one of the ropes, and is kind of like lounging with one leg up onto the side of the ship, and is just sort of um, lazily kind of considering you, and just kind of letting this moment play out, um, just kind of seeing how the crew takes you, and says, um, uh, uh, points to um, to the person who was uh, calling you out, and says. Um, so Ethan, can you tell me why we have uh, an unknown uh, guest on board uh, that was unannounced? And uh, um, Ethan is just sort of like huffing and puffing as he's come up. Um, and uh, um, kind of says, uh, you know, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, Captain, this, uh, d- 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 he just ran on board. I didn't know what to do. We were about to, uh, we were about to, um, we were about to cut him. Uh, I sauntered at best. It took you forever to even fucking notice me. Um, and the, a couple other ones are like, yeah, you guys are gonna be out for a while. You guys, do, you guys want to be like random NP, cat, fire NPCs that I'm like, um, I don't mind. It, I love it. Um, but the uh, the uh, there's there's a, that's basically Yari is basically the 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 atmosphere. Everyone else is sort of like bullshit. We saw him immediately. We pounced. Another one else is like, yeah, we pounced like mice. We was he was never no not mice like a cat like, like a cat. We pounced. Um, and. Uh, um, but there, are, there's a hubba hubba, but eventually the captain kind of silences them again and says, um, if you don't mind telling us why you've uh, graced us with your presence, this one, um, uh, did you introduce yourself to these other faces? No, fucking didn't. Nerd, nerd, gloid nuts. Nice to meet everybody. Um, you told me to be here in 36 hours, so I made it. Um, indeed I did. Uh, she kind of considers for a second, lets everyone kind of grumble for a moment, and she lets again, the, the moment, lets the moment stay longer than it probably could, should. And then she, she swings, she swings up to stand up and get everyone's attention now she's standing up, still holding on to one of these ropes and says, um, as he says, this one is Nerd Gloidnats. He is a former crew member of the fallen demon and was once a crewmate of Regit's and uh, we he has been f- asking for uh, uh, his uh, his own friends have fallen in battle and you know, though he took a new crew for a time he is now crewless and seeks shelter with this new risen demon crew so I ask those of you here any of you who are vested crew members with full shares. I ask for all of you in favor of Nerd Gloidnats being once again a fully vested crew member of the Risen Demon. Say now, aye. 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 There's a, there's a, there's a rumbling of people. <laughs> but like she she counts out and she, like, she looks around and there's a, there's a vote um, of people, the, the vested shares. Um, 
and there's a vote. It comes. It's close. There's some. There's some days and there's some eyes. Um, as she comes down to it, um, she has the uh, 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 Rajit count them up. Uh, Rajit kind of whispers into her ear. Um, uh, she smiles for a moment, uh, and nerd, these teeth fling kind of teeth are sharp and pointed like yours are. She smiles at you for a moment, a pretty evil smile. That, it's kind of hard to read. Um, and she says, um, uh, she walks over to you and just kind of stands over you for a moment. And she's tall, so she stands over you fairly high and says, um, and then she eventually says, um, she extends a hand and says, welcome to the risen demon. Nerd Gloyd nuts at one full share. And um, a few people cheer and a few people are like kind of kicking rocks and people aren't, aren't happy. Yeah, one's not happy. <laughs> Um, a few people pounding of pounding of uh, cups and mugs, and um, she kind of just walks away and walks towards her quarters and kind of lets the scene be what it is. Um, Rigi stays um, stands by for a, for a moment um, and says, um, "You know, it's not the shares you had once, but I'm sure you'll work your way back up." I didn't ask for any fucking shares. What's the point of being here if there's no shares to be had? You know, one ain't bad. Especially with what she's got brewing, it sounds like a uh, single share is going to be uh, considerable. Fair enough. Um, where you been all this time, man? We thought you was dead. I was. Really? Apparently so. I don't fucking know. Well, I'm in a fucking grave. Uh, I mean, I was dead. I'm you got, you just got married? I don't know. Yeah, apparently so. I don't know. And then I got a magnet shoved up my ass or down my throat. I don't know which Whoa. one that shot out places and then I ate a dead girl. And then there's a lot of shit that happened. There's a couple poor cities where you had to pay extra for that stuff, man. That's a, that's oh, that would not be worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, has she been chill lately? Or like, what's the deal? What the house? She, well, you know how she is. She's been, she's erratic on her best days, but uh, she's been, uh, she's been uh, pretty successful. She's had a lot of wins consecutively, and uh, you know, it's always a little bit eerie how well she knows things are going to be, where things are going to be at. Yeah, it's like almost like she has, like, knows her fucking future is, like, plotted out or something sometimes. I don't know, I feel like that. Yeah, it does feel like that sometimes. Um, where the fuck is everybody else? Uh, well, after the uh, the incident, after the attack of the, uh, the lost the uh, fallen demon, there some people came back, some people didn't make it, and uh, some of the crew felt she was a little too uh, too eccentric, and uh, you know they were dealt with. Fair enough. Okay, it's good to have you back. Yeah, no problem. Um. She's just like in her quarters, right? Usually, yeah. She stays in her quarters pretty, pretty, pretty near all the time, except for meals. Sweet. Okay, fuck that shit. I'm just going to go walk in her quarters if I can. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, she she hates it when you do it, but, you know, there was a time when you were welcome to come in, in and out whenever. You know, you still knock. You probably knock. Um, but, you know, uh, there's a door, and um, are you just entering without announcing, or are you knocking? I'll knock, but also yeah. open the door. Yeah, shoot. There's like a... Very Captain Picard sort of come. You hear from the other side of the door. Sweet, I'm going. You pop it open, and um, she is um, sitting up in the window sill of a. There's a sealed in window where you can kind of look out the back of the ship. Um, uh, again, this it's got, it's broken because this ship sucks. This isn't their main ship. This is sort of their away ship, if you will, the drop ship. And so they, she's it's like half broken. She's just kind of sipping on some sort of steaming beverage. Um, looking out the back of this ship out into the, into the water. It's uh, warm, so there's a lot of cold air kind of coming in, but she's kind of just considering it, cupping it. She says, um, is there something on your mind, Nerd? I mean, I, I, I figured it would be good to have a conversation to start out with, you know, like then maybe that's a good plan instead of just assuming I get a share and all kinds of crap. But, um, yeah. So, first question, I guess, is when are you jump in the veil or whatever the hell you want to fucking call it shit um there is a there's a, a pause and she takes another drink from this warm cup and says um she considers you for a moment and says how is it that you know my plans to go to the veil well I already told you anything that was like that shouldn't be new news. yes but you didn't tell me how you knew I don't fucking know how would I know 
she considers you for a second and she says she's going to officially roll in holy shit roll an inside check you want to roll against the nat 20 I know it doesn't count for anything but she's got a plus but you want to roll against an inside check roll roll deception when I was really trying to deceive yeah um we that is persuade. that's a 20 that's a 20 do you add anything to it no that's what they added okay so with, with, <laughs> with the pluses she's got a 24 yeah so um, with the 24 she kind of reads, reads I wasn't trying too hard I know like, this is sort of like a narrowing up this is still a friendly confrontation but it's a confrontation yeah. she just sort of considers you and she just says Do you still have something for me? You said you didn't fucking want it anymore. The firearms, these guns. Yeah, you said you didn't care. You were like done with me anyway and give a shit, so. I, she says, I don't need them any longer, but um, they are sentimental to me. If you have needed them, you're welcome to keep them. But I, um, she says, she kind of waits a second. She says, but you, you opened it then, didn't you? Open what? The f- you opened the firearm. You gave me something that was a fucking lockbox that you fiddled some knobs with. Did you really expect me not to open it? I suppose no. Um, so she kind of takes like, another long drink and says, Then you know when I have to go to the shimmer. You know what our plans are. Right, so that's still a little ways, right? I mean, it's not super descriptive. I'll just get out the fucking sheet yeah, of paper. Yeah, you should just unroll it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just be like, I mean, really, that's not for another, what, 20 days or some shit? 18, I can't do good math. Indeed, uh, but we must be in... Um, it is good to get some type of shelter and get onto the water before... before ever not, and... Um, it's not some place we'd like to be on land if we're going to have to be moving. You know, we want to be a place that is safe. And frankly, where we want to go is not the easiest place to access. Yeah. So it will take us several days to get there. So, but like, okay, I just want to go back to my message because I kind of brought up the idea of like, you know, I do have friends that are potentially still alive, potentially not. I honestly don't fucking know. And she got tisks. They tell me a lot. Yeah, test that. Whatever. I'm just asking a question. Let me fucking finish it. So, I'm pretty sure your dad's got him locked up. Hmm. I don't fucking know that. I don't know where they would go. But we had marks on our fucking hands. So I'm assuming that that's from Daddy Kins now. Hmm. That I've learned a couple things from the sheet of paper. And I dispose of your friends are still with my father then they are most likely lost these I have not been able to get rid of this black mark my no matter what I've tried and believe me I have tried everything also can I ask you a random fucking question just because I'm really curious and sure I probably shouldn't ask it I won't allow these I'm opening some sort of box that I probably shouldn't but whatever I'm open the box see. let's open this did box. you used to be a human she sighs really heavily and says yes yes I did I suppose once it was a long time ago that's fucked up. Didn't always look like this. Like I said, I have tried everything. Oh. Anyway, so when the fuck are we going? Um, she says, we'll be here in port for um, about another day. We'll sail for about a week. And then we will disembark. And we will have to tr- travel... Um, we will have to travel like by foot. Disembark, or do you just mean disembark like leave the dock? We will have to. She says, "I have to leave some things a surprise, but let's just say I don't plan on leaving the ship. But we will have to go inland some 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 way." One other thing: How did you get this little thing? She says, "Ah, that is a story." And like, how do you actually trust it? It could just be like self-fulfilling prophecy bullshit. She says, um, I received it from an oracle when I was much younger, and I questioned it for several, many years until so many things came through. I used it as a crutch, and um, it has given me, done me great benefit over the years. So, Also, I, do you know what the rediction stuff is? Uh, she kind of looks at it and she says, 
Yes, I believe that is uh, redacted. Um, and I don't, I do not know. Everybody would find out, didn't think that might be super special. I do not know. It's this oracle told me, they t told me what they said I needed to, to know. Like, I mean, this one right here could just be like, Jamil Zeresh dies 13 times and is resurrected in full pain and suffering like the fiery pits of hell. Or something, I don't fucking know. How do you know what it says? You're correct. I don't know that, that that could happen. I will tell you this. I have died. And it was not on that sheet of paper. Mm, that's even extra fucked up. <clears throat> and I also didn't get rid of my mark. So, you will not escape it that way either. Which is why I believe that you should... Is this Oracle a person or a machine? Um, I didn't see its true form. Only its the fuck does that presence. Mean? I didn't see its true form. So some random wispy ghost thing gave you a piece of paper? It was not a wispy ghost. It was, there were lights and there was, I, look, I could not see its permanent form. I don't know. I did not see a physical form. Okay. I know you're not a religious type, but... It is the closest thing I have ever experienced to it. Trust me. No, I'm not a religious type. I've met a couple gods. They're just fucking machines. It seems we have things that we could share with each other. Tell me. Um, uh, you would like to have supper to, uh, together. We can maybe share some stories. Yeah. It seems you've met my father recently. I'd like to know his health. And well, no, I didn't meet him. I met some like weird little image of him. <laughs> yes, I have experienced the same thing. Often he would appear to me thinking that we were having quality time and then he would I would touch him and he would vanish that tracks um uh, but she says uh like and as for your friends I would recommend that you if, um if you would like you can share some of your favorite memories of them tonight at dinner and we can drink to the drink to the good times you had with your former crew We'll cut back to okay. we'll cut back to a following day. She's so nice. Why don't you like her? And this is the um, this is the nice her. <laughs> I know she's so nice. <laughs> as you guys are, um, as the three of you uh, are again in individual confinements, you guys undergo uh, a full day of these of these questions. Um, on to this, uh, you guys wake up again. You guys have one less level of exhaustion. So you guys can check those off. Are we at full health, by the way? No. No. Okay. Oh yeah, our HP seconds. Because that's yeah, happened. Yeah, because yeah. of your exhaustion, you're halved. Right. Well, when does that go away? I don't think it's one more. Number four is HP is having number four. Oh, it's this one. Is oh, it's just one? Number four. Yeah, yeah, so you can. Yeah, so you're welcome to get, just as of now. It goes back up to full. Yeah. Good job. So now we have disadvantage on attack rolls and saving throws. Nice. Good job. Um, good job. So you guys are uh, in these solitary confinements again. Um, the wall in front of you is going to um, again become this uh, display, this projecting, this this um, this imagery, and you're shown more of the iconography of the of the terrestrial security guild. And there are a few quick charts and graphs that are flashed quickly, but it seem to be the results of your <laughs> health, uh, physical, and psychological uh, assessments that you've been administered over the last several days in this in this facility. And there is a a breakdown of on it. And there's a lot of details on this and it's kind of hard to see it. And you're still kind of sedated. It's hard to really focus and, and read it all. And it's going by pretty fast. But there is sort of a header on each um, that you can see on, uh, on the top of it. It looks like it has assessed all these things. And what you can see on the screen is it says um, approved approved for field use and it says uh, among other things there are some recommendations of conditions and it looks like that there is a basically it's a breakdown of these are the conditions that you guys thrive in that there are um weather conditions that there are um uh combat conditions that there are certain scenarios that sounds like basically these are things that they excel in the things that are listed in there um Tarakas, you see on your screen it says that you it listed and it knows that you seem like you're good at healing you're adept at um, buffing other combatants in party. You are uh, um, you have an aptitude for running headlong into a uh, situation that you are wholly unequipped for, knowing uh, but you have a high optimism. Um, but uh, 
uh, and, and but uh, a low understanding of your own skills, of the own capacity of your own skills. Um, and this is what you read on there. You're an excellent chef. What in the world? And it doesn't even tell tell you that I'm slightly anemic on there. What in the world? Lilith, you get a similar breakdown um, where it says uh, um, uh, it, it, on there. It says. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, very low interpersonal skills. There is um, uh, there is uh, jealousy issues. It shows that there are um, that there is an aptitude for violence, and it shows that there is a proclivity to uh, uh, to uh, there's an anger issue that the thing is uh, jumping up um, a little bit too quickly and getting out of hand. Um, and uh, but it also shows the same thing that you see on Tarakas. It says it's approved for field use. Oh, These are just kind of the <clears throat> subcategories that they're breaking down. Kaz, you also see this approved for field use. You have a couple things broken down as well, um, which just says uh, a, a couple of things that, you, um, that are listed under yours. Uh, they're just kind of like simple, blunter adjectives. They have um, yours just says big cat, and another one says real strong. Um, another one says punch things so hard it die. And uh, but like it has a breakdown. It's basically like um, it like can lift extreme like um, has list have list have lifted extreme weights you know it's, it's basically a litany of things that you've done throughout the last 12 levels um of things that you are excelling at um uh and it says a uh, combat superiority close uh, close quarters melee combat um and it's just like a bulleted list of things that you guys are good at um and after after these breakdowns you guys are reading these uh these this analysis there is a uh uh, it's a distorted voice. This is, it seems humanoid, but it isn't one that you recognize, and it is distorted. Um, but you are given um, basically a binary choice on this screen. Um, you are, uh, well, first off, you're written, um, there's a few other things that are listed off on this on the screen before you're given a choice. And it is, um, you, you, you're you reading it, and it's giving you the, as, you, as you're reading it, you realize what it is. It is the uh, um, uh, verdict that has been given from these and it says the three judges and each of you see that there are similar verdicts so you're, you're all in the room by yourselves but you're seeing the same thing the verdict are one vote not guilty two votes guilty on all counts and you can see that these counts are and there's a list of things that are on this verdict and they start off with uh, a public disturbance use of non-gilded uh, accommodations Okay, well, among other things yeah. but the last and, and largest one that you, uh, you see and each one of these has a number of days after it and the last one that you guys see is um, attempted assassination of a public figure mm -hmm. and there are a, a litany of things on this list I'd like to argue that and you can see that on the bottom of this there's accumulation of days and you can see that each of your sentences that you guys have been sentenced to 12 years of internment in this uh, in this penitentiary in the system mm -hmm. and after being presented with this verdict of 12 years and a sentence of 12 years that you were then presented with a uh, a choice and that um, the system again it's the bright lights are on it's all very clean you've been given your you've been getting fed it's not good food but you've been getting fed um, and you're given a choice the choice is as follows you can go into solitary confinement and continue the rest of your 12 year sentence in these same conditions and enjoy those conditions. Or the alternative, which is you can reduce your sentence with a series of high risk jobs that you would have no say in the objective or execution of. You could reduce these the sentence down with a series of jobs, having it each time to the point where you could almost get out in less than a year if you did these series of jobs and you presented with a binary choice and you're given until the morning to make the decision so you have one full day to consider however you're not in a room with anyone else mm -hmm. so Tarakas actually I see you think I'm well, first let's go to you first Lilith mm -hmm. okay you have a day to yourself to think mm-hmm and it doesn't give any kind of details. No, it actually specifies be. that you won't get details. Nothing. And if you disagree we'll with the, the job. and if you disagree with it, you won't be able to disagree with it. And if you disagree with how it's being asked for you to do it, you won't be able to disagree with that either. 
You will do it. Doing it no matter what. You will do it, and you will do it as they ask you to do it. Or again, you know how the you know the corrective measures that they have access to. So you can't refuse the gym cards. That's funny. I'll allow that. That's cool. (laughs) Sorry, I want to fuck with you. Yeah, do it. Okay. (laughs) So you guys don't know like what each other picks. Yeah. Not a bad idea. I'm good at that. Did we got pens? Uh Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, um. Each of you are given this option. Each of you have a full day. So you guys are pacing around in this in this uh, very clean and white, bright setting, considering your ideas. Actually, hold on to them. All right. The following morning, you can remove one more state of exhaustion. Yeah. And you realize now, I mean, it's probably fairly, I mean, it's obvious you guys have been there enough days and you're kind of checking for like, how are they drugging you? It seems to be whatever it is, it's in the food. Like you're being given a slurry, basically, like a food slurry. So there's no way if you just separate out, like if you want to not starve to death, you're going to be sedated. So you kind of have choices over, you can either be sedated and not have your levels of exhaustion, or you can not eat and slowly get exhaustion. But you wouldn't be sedated so much. Hmm. So there's a, it's just a, it's a I mean, something you would just know passively from the last couple of days of experiencing this. Uh-huh. It's a thing that's on the table. But you are still sedated. But you're no longer exhausted. So well, at least to that level. So in the morning, you are all presented with this same option. This voice again as it's prompting. It's you know, prisoner two four six zero one. What is your? What is your? I think I already used that once actually in the other prison. Um, oh, yeah. What is your uh, what is your decision? Let's go with you, Lilith, first. You want to hold up your card? She's. What is, what I will. Was, I will take the job. She's taking to the job. my sentence. She's taking the job. She <laughs> wrote the full statement. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't remember yeah. if I was supposed to write yes or no, so yeah. I'm just writing the whole thing. Yeah. And then I signed my name. And she signed her name on it. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Lilith taking the job. Tarakas, the same thing. In the morning, you're being asked if you were going to take it or not. Yes, so I will do it. So you're going to do it. Kaz? So, <laughs> I, no, I love it. So, um, Kaz Say. says, fuck you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love great. this. I love, I love it. it. <laughs> you're, you're welcome to my table anytime. The, uh, so, Kaz, there's this, um, again, it's... Okay, it's, does that mean yes or no? I'm assuming it means no. She said like it does okay. mean no. Yeah, it means, it, means, it, it, like, it means go fuck yourself. I'm not playing your fucking game. Yeah, I could see that. Um so um Kaz uh there is um as the uh uh during the um the one time of day that uh there is uh you know you're being taken in and out of the room for your for your use the facilities as it were. Um as you're being taken out and escorted, you can see that uh, there is these long again, this hallway of all of these other doors. Um, for the first time, you can hear or see another person because at the far end, you know, maybe 100, 150 feet away, at the very far end of this hallway, at the same time that you're being um, um, put in kind of like you've used the facilities and now the door to your cell is open and you're being kind of escorted back into your cell. At the same time, um, Lilith and Tarakas, you guys are both. Uh, being escorted out of yourselves into by again by multiple enforcers to another facility um, kind of being dragged kind of being taken to another facility um, uh, down this hallway away but the timing is such that Kaz as you're being put back into your room there's a one second as you're looking down the hallway you see a flash of green hair is it Oh. Tell me what this one is. You got crazy hair. You see a flash of of <clears throat> olive skin and braided blonde hair. With a jumpsuit that's doing nothing for her. <laughs> <laughs> they don't see you. He'll buy this time and go back into his cell. You take a, you just, you have a moment, you can, you consider something, but you just enjoy the last moment, seeing. Yeah. 
him. The back he, of your companion's he has, head. He has hope. He has extreme hope. And as you're guided back into the room, the door behind you hisses closed, and you are back in your solitary confinement. Now, there was one difference about the room. This, the one wall that is a projection screen, essentially, now features... Um, hold on, let me, let me do some quick math here. Let me put the thing in there. Um, on the side of your wall, there is now just a, a large LED display of a number, and it says 4,380 days. <laughs> I think that's a good place for me to end our session today. <laughs> did, did, what? did little thing Taraka see each other? We'll listen. We'll, 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 um, we will say that. Uh, what's in there? Lilith and Tarakas, you see each other for the first, like for the first time in days, okay. as you guys are being escorted into some sort of briefing room. Yeah. Um, but that's where we'll probably stop. As you guys are yeah. just outside of a room, and you guys would be, um, you guys are not alone. You see that there are there are three other cuffed individuals that you do not recognize that are also just standing outside of this room. Mm. I think that's where we're stop. So let's stop the weird tone in the background and let's go to the metagame. You want to come with us? Let's go. Let's go to the metagame. Welcome to the metagame. Oh my god, it's the metagame! Oh. Aha! Okay, where we're at here, this is the metagame. Uh, this is where we talk about tonight's session. Where we talk about what happened, how the Everything PCs are feeling. Um, what their hopes and dreams are, and the, all the reasons that they hate their DM for what they what I've done to them. Um, <laughs> no. So, uh, any thoughts on tonight's episode? How's everyone feeling? It was good. You got trapped. A little trapped. Yeah. A little anxious. Mm -hmm. Got my mojo no. taken away from me. Got your mojo taken. Nerd in a way agrees with the trapped feeling. Oh yeah. Oh. I I. <laughs> Wow, let's talk about that because yeah. I really like that you pick up on that because I, when I was considering, like, when we have a split party, I want them all to be in the same headspace. And you told me, give it, you gave me a heads up to the last episode, right? You're like, you were considering you were calling the captain. Well, I, I said, yeah, if they don't respond, I don't know who else to reach yeah. out to. So. And I, I love the, well, how do you feel? Let's talk about this. How's Nerd feel about having a new crew? It seems like you definitely weren't expecting or maybe loving that. Well, I kind of thought, no, that wasn't really in there at all. Like, I kind of was assuming I killed a few of them in a big explosion thing, remember? And mm -hmm. you did, probably. That's yeah. what, and that's what he said as much, was like, not everyone made it out. No, 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 no. Not the explosion where I was on the ship. The exploding ship, I exploded. Oh. They don't the know that was you. Right, right but I do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, and I'm yeah. assuming at least the one guy, I'm assuming Tobias was at least on oh. that. I let's really talk wrong, about this. Uh, since, since this is the metagame, let's talk about that. You guys were a long ways away, and what you guys saw was there were ships in the harbor, and as you guys got a long ways away, you guys saw a massive explosion. But not in the harbor. It was off. It was off a bit, yeah. where the like where the ships had, yeah. would, or, or a ship would be out in, in port. Um, I don't know a way to show, not tell you guys this, but since it, it seems to matter, this ship that you're on, oh, you haven't seen their ship yet. Right. Um, Maybe, I don't know if this is worth, how would you ever know it if I don't tell you guys out of character? What actually happened there, remember there was a buyer, the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. was about to make a huge pickup. Yeah. Now, there was also agents from Suresh there to basically pinch a big share of that, mm -hmm. of that uh, black powder, yeah. which is why she doesn't need you anymore. Because she stole okay. like a life's worth supply, like supply got it, got it, got it, right? Got it, got it. It's shitty though. It is shitty. That is an angle that you have if you okay. consider it. It is shitty. And she would know this now at this okay. point. Okay. Also, another thing. The majority, the vast majority of the black powder and where you guys set the charges was on what ship? The Commonwealth one. It was on the Commonwealth ship. Yeah. You guys blew the fuck out of the Commonwealth ship. You did not blow up her ship. Right, because I was just yeah. destroying the gunpowder. Right. Yeah. So, so her she still has her gunpowder that she stole yes. and you didn't oh. kill anyone in her ship you killed all the commonwealth people in the ship right but see it seemed like if well, her all ship, her people were off if her ship was the one that we were looking at they got close to and then we fizzled out on yeah but like but that yeah. wasn't her ship or that was like that's the really the question because uh, my impression at least was that the there's the commonwealth ship the crazy because... ass iron bound ship that's her ship okay but my impression was that was the one dropping off the gunpowder 
at the thing. I didn't realize that was your own thing. Okay. Okay. So there was another. Thing. There was a third. There's ship. a lot going on there. There was a third ship dropping off the gunpowder. If you and and here's the teaser. If you remember that ship, you guys never really saw because you're like, where did it even come from? There was a massive fog bank cloud, and it came from out of nowhere. I was teasing you guys with that was the first airship. There's an been a uh, airship there in Venkirk, kind of hiding out, kind of like recon, like doing uh, recon. I thought the fog was around. And it dro- that's what dropped off the barrels. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. That makes more sense. Okay. That's why there wasn't another ship there to, like, where's the third ship? I kind of wanted yeah. you guys to be like, where's this other ship? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was the oh, I was supposed to be on. Right? That's why I thought she was kind of working with Daddy for a while. Mm-hmm. Because I, I thought, especially when you described the fog stuff, mm-hmm. I was like, wait, so is she still working for him? But he doesn't right. know that mm-hmm. she's her or something weird like that. I got a lot of things like, going on back here. Because I thought the fog was around her ship and then also around the airships. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize there was an airship that night. That makes sense. That's just kind of like they're like hide yeah. a ship out. Um, there's gonna be more. I'm gonna make it even more confusing. So just wait. It's gonna get even more fun. Um, but yeah, that's the idea that behind it is that um, she was. Uh, yeah, she she's unscathed. You haven't killed any of her crew necessarily. Not recently, anyway. Um, uh, um, but yeah, being a part of the crew, having a share, being a part of the crew again. Um, that was interesting. So feeling trapped, huh? Uh-huh. I like that. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? Was there any collateral damage this week? Our freedom. Our freedom. Our freedom. Fun. Yeah. yeah. You been back in twelve years or less. <laughs> How'd you guys like those tests? Ugh, I hate being put on the spot with questions. Yeah. It's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> You're really good with it. Though. Yeah, you do do a good job. I was like, how can I ask more questions to get more information to give me longer to answer? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, whatever no. works. Um, off camera, yeah, you called out that those are basically the boy comp test questions. They are. Yeah, well, a couple, it's some of verbatim. Yeah. yeah. Also, like, nerd would like to just send a big old fuck you to Lilith for that. It was from a loved one. I guess it was from you. Like, you, like, took it off your ankle or something. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, now I appreciate the answer. Yeah. yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. I was like, no one would give me that except for nerd, because it would be something sentimental then. Did he peel himself? Like, <laughs> I know. That's why I was like, this is weird. But you all anyway, got the letter for Christmas. That's great. <laughs> I had some more. I don't think what it is is just a big patch of dry skin that fell off. Of the oh. Ew. Oh. Uh, ew. 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 Icky. Um, Sorry, I got a sunburn. This all came off at once. <laughs> Isn't Nerd's Goblin Wallet just his butthole anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Prison Wallet. Uh, Prison Wallet, that's what it is. What about um, so the people voting on the uh, Kaz filling out, uh, just kind of live out the sentence, and the two of you maybe up for some, gonna some changes? Maybe up for I'm some. Gonna, I'm going to skip the first chance I get. For some, maybe. some other side quests. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out what happens. Uh-huh. It's going to be something it. twisted. I know. That's why I'm like... Mm. Yeah. Or not. My curiosity is, are you going to get all your stuff back? Uh, as long as you get In order to slots. do the quest. Or yeah. are you going to... Yeah. Right? They've got to have some way to are they control gonna give you, like, default that thing gear. in our brain. Yeah, what do you guys yeah. think about yeah. that? I just like I that. I hate it. The, oh, the cool. brain bandage thing. Ah. Uh, I'm guessing, like, to do that, you had to shave part of my head, so I'm not happy about it. Yeah, probably a little they bit. They didn't have to, but they did. They did. Just because. <laughs> they didn't have to. <laughs> <say first. laughs> big old oh, sorry, I a shave spot right there. Oh, we were putting it on the other side. Yeah. Oh, well. Yep. <laughs> Chris, did you change just like a cool undercut? Oh. Um, yeah, that's crazy. That's a little <laughs> interesting to see what's going to happen next time, next week. See what those uh, mm-hmm. the missions might be. See what nerd and the crew of the Risen Demon is going to be going to be doing and uh, um, Kaz living out some some prison time seeing if Kaz loses his mind or if Kaz even considers a breakout of his own or at least attempting or is maybe going to be trying to just, he's on vacation just living out his best on life vacation. meditating every day getting free food yeah um, it wouldn't be one of my campaigns if I didn't split the party for an extended period of time <laughs> <laughs> You knew somebody was gonna was gonna do it. I was. Like, uh, I mean, it's really no. more on me. Let's be real. I'm the one who no, was I feel like, like out of the like, out of the way. Oh, no. Anybody. No, I know. Like you know, like it is what it is. Yeah. Like the story is like as I don't agree with like don't split the party. It's like yeah, don't split the party unless the party gets like unless it's called for. Or I think that, I think that don't split the party is as a party. As oh, yeah. a party, you don't go like. 
you guys go this way and I yeah. go, and yeah. go yeah. this way. We'll mm-hmm. like, yeah. we're, we're, we survive, yeah. But I mean, I, I think this is fun. I think it gives ch- people chances to kind of explore the characters, who they are, without the rest of the yeah. uh-huh. the group. You know, um, does nerd? I'd be interested to see, like, does nerd trouble. become a different person with this crew? It's so much like, trouble. Are you gonna keep the same like kind of person who you are with? Baby? I already feel like I'm probably. I would assume to her I'm already coming off more like a sort of ballsy ish. Yeah. Than you were before. Yeah. Than I was before, but I don't know that. Like, Even as subservient. Um. Yeah, I mean, she at least was, that I think I am. I mean, she invited you to dinner. I think she said no. You. <laughs> we can only hope. Yeah. Um. What else? What else? What else happened? What else did we learn? My sense isn't that wide. No problem. Is there a, a most hazardous hero? I mean, Wait. potentially the ones who accepted the job. Yeah. Yeah. Potentially That's the true. ones. The one who went back to the demon. I don't know. Yeah, you guys are. It's up there. This is fun. I'm sorry we didn't get to do a ton of dice rolling. It wasn't a lot of, uh, wasn't a lot of uh, combat, but it was a good, yeah, was good. session. Um, let's see. Uh, sounds like... Oh, <laughs> those are actually decent. I'm I'm sorry, that one. Well, we're glad that we at least know what we're doing next session. Sounds like that's going to be a good one. You should come by and you should watch it with us. Uh, we're going to be here. We're going to be playing Join D&D. Us. And uh, we're going to see if they survive and if they come back together as a party. Um, that's going to be a good one. I'll be here. They'll be here, and you should too. So, uh, same time, same haphazard station, and we will see you all next week. There you go. Bye. Bye.